such a bill, and the administration has long claimed the ability to engage in military operations without congressional authorization at any rate, so its impact is unclear. It does, however, coincide with a letter from Susan Rice saying the administration urges the repeat of the 2002 authorization for use of military force in Iraq, saying it was no longer necessary and would increase public confidence that a new invasion is not imminent. The letter suggests President Obama is not eager to continue precipitous escalation back into Iraq, though at the same time, it reiterated the promise to take targeted and precise military action to protect U.S. interest in Iraq, irrespective of any authorization. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a state judge struck down Florida's gay marriage ban on Friday in the latest in a string of legal gay rights victories that have nonetheless been put on hold for resolution by higher courts. Circuit Court Judge Sarah Zabel in Miami-Dade County said Florida's ban violated the constitutional right to due process and equal protection, as well as offended basic human decency. Florida's Attorney General quickly appealed the ruling, but Zabel said the slew of recent verdicts showed that it is increasingly obvious it is not permissible to deny couples the right to marry solely on the basis of their sexual orientation and that doing so served no governmental purpose. She wrote, It serves only to hurt to discriminate, to deprive same-sex couples and their families of equal dignity, to label and treat them as second-class citizens, and to deem them unworthy of participation in one of the fundamental institutions of our society. Since the Supreme Court ordered the federal government last year to extend benefits to legally married gay couples, every federal and state court that has taken up the issue of same-sex marriage, about 20 courts, has ruled against the ban. Most of these rulings are on hold. Don Price Johnston, a 44-year-old plaintiff in the Miami lawsuit, said he was thrilled with the ruling and that he did not mind that it had to be stayed for now. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Israel's far-right security cabinet was unanimous in its opposition to the U.S. proposed ceasefire measure yesterday, and its more hawkish members are being increasingly public about their opposition to ceasefire in general. One of the cabinet members warned in comments to the press, if BB ends it now, he's finished. And another insisted Israel's survival depended on ensuring that no ceasefire was reached. These aren't political opponents of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu either. Some are members of his own party. So while Netanyahu is said to be getting cold feet about the further escalation and looking for a way out before the Israeli military toll gets too large, the risk of losing his own party support is keeping the war going. Israeli media reports say Netanyahu's primary planning for the war is done with Defense Minister Moshe Yalon and Justice Minister Zibi Livni, comparative moderates on the Security Cabinet, but how they will ever muster a majority to end the war remains unclear. Looming large is not only the risk of new Likud splits, but Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman or someone else forcing early elections as a result and trying to parlay the peace into a new, even more pro-war coalition. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after Seattle area consulting firm Brink and Tiller received a resume from Corey Wilhelm, a college graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Communications, Human Resources Director Robert Bradshaw immediately fast-tracked Wilhelm's application and spoke with The Onion about this exceptional candidate. Well, the second I saw Corey's resume, I knew I had to send it straight up to our CEO. I mean, we're talking about an applicant who not only got into the University of Washington School of Communication, but also managed to graduate in four years with a Bachelor of Arts. This kid's only 22, but according to his resume, he already has experience in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. 
We're really going to have to move fast to get this guy. Bradshaw went on to say that company heads could barely believe the candidate had two years of experience working at his college newspaper and had even taken a full four years of high school Spanish. Since receiving the application, Bradshaw claims the company has made numerous attempts to reach Wilhelm. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we'll take your calls about anything that you want to discuss. Just dial on in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. It is the live Saturday edition of the program with you in the studio tonight. Ian here. And Mark. Uh, so again, toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We're going to get into uh, some pretty outrageous news coming out of Washington, D.C. here in a moment. Also want to welcome our brand newest affiliate, KSMD, in Searcy, Arkansas, 99.1. Awesome. News talk. So welcome aboard. They're coming on for uh, Saturday and Sunday nights. And they're a live affiliate, which is always nice to have people listening live. So they can call in. Well, you can call in anyway, even if the radio station you're listening to isn't airing us live. We are live 7 to 10 at night, Eastern Time, seven days a week. It's just a lot less likely that somebody will. It is. It is. You can always schedule a call, and then you can listen to yourself later on. So give us a call about whatever's on your mind. If you're new to the show there in uh, CRC, then you probably figured out already. This isn't our first weekend on. We always wait to welcome a new station once I know for sure they're actually airing the show. And so it's not our first weekend on there. It's it's kind of a different program, isn't it, Mark? Free Talk yeah, Live? Yeah, Free Talk Live is diff absolutely different than every other thing that you're going to hear on talk radio. For one, we call ourselves Free Talk Live, not the Ian and Mark show, because this is a show about the callers. They call in, um, talk about what's on their mind. Yeah, we hold their feet to the fire. Yes, we uh, want to have a conversation. But you're much more likely to get on this show than you are to get on the other shows where some person is – the show's named after some person and they spend the vast and you'll talk of the time. about what he wants to talk about for uh, the whole time he wants to talk about it or she and then maybe that person will open up the phones once a week for an hour or something like that right they they certainly <laughs> don't focus on the calls the way that we focus on the calls there's yeah. no doubt about it and the other side of it is is that we don't take the re left or right paradigm we believe um in we believe in free markets on every issue every time we believe that free people interacting freely between each other is the best solution to every problem and that every Every time governments intervene, that there are always unintended consequences, and largely those unintended consequences are negative. Now, the issue that I wanted to bring to the table tonight, because yes, we will take your calls about anything, but obviously as uh, talk show hosts, we got to do our job and bring stuff to talk about too. So what I wanted to share was from the Free Thought Project. And by the way, they do an amazing job over at thefreethoughtproject.com, posting all kinds of great news. And it's always backed up by, you know, actual sort of legit mainstream media news stories and things like that. They've got links and footnotes and stuff. So here's what's going on. You may recall, if you've listened to Free Talk Live for a while or and or happened to have heard these stories in the news in the past for the like the last decade ever since uh 2001 and the attacks on uh, the world trade center there's been like this fbi kind of crackdown on terrorism they're trying to put a stop to terrorists right and then every now and then you'll hear a story about how the fbi has stopped someone from setting off a bomb that they supplied to them right um, somebody but that they, they talked them into supplied them with gave them, them money training uh incentives that it turns out that it like every time, almost every instance of a so-called terror plot being foiled within the last decade, uh, over over the last decade, between the two different Bush and Obama administrations, there have been story after story of these patsies, basically, like these suckers that you know they uh, they're angry at the federal government. That's true. I mean, the people that they're busting or Christians here, or white people or whatever they're angry at. They're they're angry at you know usually it's they're angry at the government and well, uh, the they're government angry guys. largely because of what the government's done. That's that what I mean true. because the, the government has gone over to uh, other countries. The the U.S. military has bombed people and destroyed lives and destroyed businesses and families and. So it's not fine. It's not. It's not too hard to find people who are angry uh, with the state. But what they've done that I think crosses the line is pushing them toward doing something against the state, pushing these individuals who are, you know, in a in a state of mind that is maybe more vulnerable because of their anger, uh, pushing them, encouraging them, giving them the means to commit 
an act of violence, uh, or at least the intention to commit an act of violence. Usually the, it's an, an inert bomb. It's not an actual bomb that they're supposed to set off because they thought it was a bomb that therefore that's a criminal well, act. It's hard for me to feel bad um, for you know some of these guys when I've read, read these stories and um, the way that the, the crime goes down. But I think that it bears pointing out that the FBI, you know, has trained, armed, and uh, encouraged, and in many cases driven and done all, everything that they they do to these folks. That's worth pointing out. And I also right, it doesn't further excuse think, the there, desire to kill somebody. There's one in case in particular where they killed a guy's chance of getting a job in another state because yeah. they didn't want him to go away. That we've worked too hard setting this guy up, right. and we're almost ready for him to to do his bad deed, and then he wants to go get a job and change his life? No. Now, that is not the attitude of a law enforcement officer, plus the fact that the FBI doesn't record interviews, audio or video. They just write things down and, we ex- and we're expected to believe them. This isn't police work. I mean, th- this isn't even police work no. from the 1980s. No. This is police work from the 1940s. These people are acting like they're... Police work, from my understanding, or something. Like, it, uh, police work to me should be working to prevent crime, you know, by educating people and giving maybe self-defense courses and things like that to kind of stop crime from happening in the first place, preventative patrols, things like that, and then also to investigate crime after the the crime has happened, to investigate based on whatever evidence happens to be there and find the person, hopefully, or people responsible for an actual you know, violent or destructive act against other human beings or their property. That, to me, is what the police should be doing. What they shouldn't be doing is going out and creating a criminal. Now, I'm not excusing, you know, if somebody thought they were going to hit a button and they are going to explode a van full of uh, bombs to kill innocent people, you know, I don't feel bad about them wanting to do that. That's, that's a terrible thing for them to want to do. But the fact is, in almost every one of those occasions, they were coaxed into it, talked into it, pushed into it by these federal agents and that is it's wrong well we don't know how many people out there would commit a crime if it was as easy as pushing a button but wouldn't commit a crime if it was as hard as putting in you know weeks and weeks of getting together you know bomb making materials and stuff like right, that which they don't the, do the question is it's should we incarcerate them. everybody should we go out and try to to create the, essentially these thought crimes um, yeah. go out and and figure out who 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 would push a button and kill people well to me it sounds like entrapment i mean i i can't say i know what the legal definition of entrapment is but but if you are encouraged by an undercover agent to commit a criminal act, if the undercover agent provides you with the tools that you'll need to commit that criminal act, and then the undercover agent is you know, involved in arresting you for committing that act, that seems to me like just classic entrapment. But it's only happened at the FBI level, at least that we knew of, until now. Here's a story from the Free Thought Project. Under, uh, undercover D.C. police are targeting people that they think may be susceptible to wanting wanting to commit robberies in the future, giving them the means, including, in some cases, guns and getaway cars, and opportunity to do so. Instead of busting people for crimes they've actually committed, they're enticing these alleged would-be criminals with strip clubs, liquor, and situations that would likely not arise in normal life, then setting up SWAT teams to bust them for agreeing to the officers' plans. One example discussed in a Washington Post report tells the story of two undercover officers planning a robbery with three unknowing men, then supplying them with a 9mm pistol and an AK-47 assault rifle before having a drink with them and uniformed officers busting in to arrest them. Another example included officers setting up a robbery of a liquor store. The officers agreed to provide the 18- and 19-year-old men with weapons, as well as buying these teenagers alcohol, and trying to get them into a strip club. Michelle Peterson, an attorney for one of the young men, stated the police... I, I, could- you know, I, I hate the idea that uh, we're... Let's liquor people up and see what they'll say. I mean, yeah. at, at that point, this is essentially what we're saying here is, is you know, let's let's buy people alcohol right. and see what they'll say. Because. All right, Jimmy, you want to go rob that place now? Yeah, hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, if conspiracy, conspiracy is a charge, right? Yeah. But, I mean, this is essentially, hey, this guy wants to rob a liquor store, and if I keep talking to him about it, he'll buy me drinks <laughs> and take me to a strip club. <laughs> this is crazy. Yep. Welcome to Washington, D.C. But the question is, is this happening anywhere else? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'll tell you more about some of these cases here in a moment, what they're up to. This, to me, this is entrapment, isn't it? 
I think you need to commit the crime, and I think the conspiracy is always a very weak thing. Yeah, but they'll send you to prison for conspiracy charges. Oh, they'll send you to prison for anything. they got a prison industrial complex. The they make money off you. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live's live Saturday edition. Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. 
We are in uh, in the middle of the live Saturday edition of the program, and of course, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Perhaps you'd care for a fresh cup of coffee? Well, unfortunately, we can't give it to you directly over the radio, but uh, you can get a whole pound of it for free. Delicious coffee, too. It's uh, shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's the best of the best coffee. It's BuzzBox coffee. You can go over to coffee.freetalklive.com, uh, sign up for the subscription there, get a free pound of coffee. You pay for the, the, uh, the shipping, and we'll send you the pound. But... If you continue to get your coffee through that subscription, you can cancel it at any time. If you continue to get your coffee there, you'll be doing business with a company, um, BuzzBox, that we signed up with. And the reason we did was because they not only do they care about their own uh, workers, uh, you know, they they set up something that's far better than what they call fair trade out there. Um, it's a coffee co-op where they take people in poor countries and they allow them to to have to own their own little coffee farm, and that really makes life better for them. But also for people who participate uh, with, uh, you know, coffee.freetalklive.com, we um, are able to give microloans. For every 10 people who sign up, we're able to give another microloan to another uh, poor family around the world, whether they need a plow or a sewing machine or, you know, some kind of restaurant equipment, whatever it is they need to get a hand up, we can do that. So please help us help other people by getting getting your coffee that you already drink. You drink coffee already. Just drink better coffee. Drink it through coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones and to your thoughts. We're talking about the D.C. cops who are apparently in the sort of the vein of the FBI going around and setting people up to fail. They are creating crimes where one would not have necessarily existed, plying young males in D.C. with guns and alcohol and even strippers in an attempt to get them to sign on to commit a robbery, for instance. And then once they agree to commit the robbery, then uh, the cops come in and they arrest these char uh, characters. We'll continue with the story here, but Lewis has some thoughts he wants to share in Keene, New Hampshire, listening to WKBK. Hello, Lewis. Hi, yes. I just wanted to talk about the difference between <clears throat> entrapment and, uh, you know, what would be a legitimate investigation in that sort of situation. Sure. So if, let's say, somebody goes to the police and they say, Joe Schmo was planning to blow up the police station in Keene, and he's getting ready to do it. And the police then disguise themselves as arms merchants and set them up with uh, the fake explosives, and they go and they demonstrate that, yes, they're willing to detonate the bomb. Okay, then that's not entrapment. But if the police hear somebody is mad at the police department, and then they go over and they suggest to the guy, hey, you know, if you're really mad at the Keene police, we can give you a bomb and you can blow up the headquarters. Yep. Then that's entrapment. So then you would agree that it, that it sounds to me like the D.C. police are absolutely entrapping these uh, these young men. They are supplying weapons. They are plying them with alcohol. They are plying them with strippers in order to get them to agree uh, to this thing. Which, by the way, I think one of the most important points about entrapment is it doesn't allow, and conspiracy charges, they don't allow for people to change their mind. Maybe while they were in a drunken state at a bar, they agreed that they would go ahead and go along with this particular uh, heist. And then maybe the next day or whenever it was that this was going to happen, they thought a little further on it and they thought, what the hell have I agreed to do here? I've got a family or whatever. And then they bail out at the last minute or a day before when it was actually supposed to happen. You don't actually get to find that out because they're just arresting them right out the gate. Yeah, no, that's... Uh... That that's exactly right. If it's and also if the police went to them with the suggestion that hey look you could do this, yep. it has to be the person's idea and the person already has to be well on his way. Like when you see these things uh, on the TV where the uh, the police discover that somebody's planning to kill their wife, and so the FBI agent disguises himself as a hitman. That person has already got the murder planned, and he thinks the policeman is a hitman. Yeah. And the policeman just makes him think that he's facilitating what he's already got cooking. Yeah, That's I think you make an important distinction arrest. here. Right. Well, 
And uh, but if the policeman says, "Boy, your wife is a pain in the foot," right. I can pop her off for you. Then that's entrapment. That's putting. That's planting the suggestion. Go but ahead, Mark. What they can say is, is that to sort of get around this is, "Hey, I've got a truckload of AK-47s, or uh, you know, an, a, a small dirty bomb, or whatever it is that I've got in my uh, truck, and I can I can get it for you. What What do you think you'd like to do with it?" And then you've got them. Well. Uh, if I had that many AK-47s, I'd rob a bank or, you know, whatever mm. it is that one might do. Yeah. So Either way, I think that's an un unacceptable. Well, I think that first off, when we start, you know what, let's get them drunk and bring in some strippers and yeah. then talk to them about a crime. I think that at that point we've gone way too far. Lewis, thanks for the clarification. Anything else you want to throw out there tonight? Oh, yeah. Well, it's also like uh, one of the things that's always puzzled me really is, when they go after sex criminals on the Internet and the police go on disguised and send this guy emails, hey, I think you're gorgeous, why don't you come to my place? And when the guy does, they arrest him. Yep. And, you know, and there are some the of them who will say... They initiate it, right. Yeah. And then uh, I think that the, they're cutting a very, very fine line there between investigating and entrapment. Yeah, I agree. The thing is, is that no one cares about that one. Um, you know, that's that's the one that is the public just they, they eat up. They they love to hear people that, um, you know, they don't care how randy the uh, 11 year old mm. acted. Um, you know, they what they care about is, is oh, yeah, we got ourselves another sex criminal off the um, off the streets. Yeah. I don't know what the ages I, I don't pay that much attention, but I don't know what the age is that they, um, you know, the police officers who pretend to be young boys or young uh, girls, but, you know, pick, but I, I often think that... It's 14 to 21, depending, typically, in the ones I've seen, at least around here in Keene. There was one recently where... Someone pretends wasn't, to be less than 21? Well, right. It, it was a different situation. The same guy who normally pretends to be a 14-year-old boy or girl or whatever, he was also pretending to be a 21-year-old girl who was a college student looking to make some money from somebody who'd placed an ad on Craigslist. So mm -hmm. some local guy here in Keene uh, placed an ad on Craigslist looking to find somebody to do some porn shoots, basically, right? And uh, shooting porn is technically legal in New Hampshire, so long as it's not for your own personal consumption. Uh, it has to be intended for sale. And so, because that would just be prostitution, we couldn't have that, right? right? So the individual uh, or the the police officer managed to, as the character of this college girl in Keene's a college town, uh, as the character of this 21 year old college girl, managed to get this individual to agree that the videos that they, that he would be shooting would only be for his personal collection. So she wouldn't do the shoot if it weren't for his personal collection. They arrested him and charged him with three counts of prostitution. D did he do the shoot? He did. Uh, no, wait. No, he didn't. I'm sorry. How could he do the shoot? He'd, agree he'd agreed to do the shoot. So at yeah. that point, he's what? Agreed to do? I, I don't yes, even the understand. prostitution is when you agree to the, the price for the sexual Because at that point, service. he hasn't had a chance to put a pen in front of this woman's um, in, in, in her hand and, so that she can sign a contract. I, so I just don't a think verbal that... agreement. That's all they ever need. Lewis, thanks for the call tonight, man. I do appreciate hearing from you this evening. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's as soon as you get the agreement of sex for money, typically is when the cops will move in and, and make an arrest. And that's what they did. They actually, I'm sorry, what they did was they set up the meeting in like the McDonald's parking lot or something and like that. Him. And then they arrested him. More coming up, 855 450 free. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 why did you move to the shire i moved here to the shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as i do I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now.
I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. <laughs> This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE, especially want to hear from you if you have any feelings on the situation that I would call entrapment, where the police are targeting people in D.C. Now, I'm going to read the police's response to this in a moment here from a different story in the Washington Post. They're saying that uh, they're only going after people they know are real criminals, not just like, you know, some guy in a bar who happens to be drunk and talking tough. But we'll continue with that here in a moment. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Hey, you want to get a free Bitcoin wallet? It's easy. You go to blockchain.info. Now, maybe you don't know yet what Bitcoin is. It's a decentralized, internet-based currency that is arguably taking the world by storm. Dell Computers recently started taking Bitcoin, and they are the third largest company in the United States. Third largest privately owned uh, company in the United States. Other companies uh, like Newegg and Overstock and uh, WordPress, many others, are, are jumping on board and taking Bitcoin as payment on their websites. And some stores, brick and mortar, are actually taking Bitcoin in person. The new blockchain.info app, which is available for Android. There's one available for iPhone, but it's not the new one. I don't know, if they, I don't know when that one's coming out. But uh, the Android one's been upgraded. It's even better than ever and you can go and get your wallet for free over at blockchain.info. It's a great way to get started with Bitcoin. That's blockchain.info. Also, blockchain.com if you want to go there to easily download the web wallet, or the not the web wallet, but the, uh, the, the Android app. wallet, yeah. the app. Uh, blockchain.com has that front and center right on the front page. So go and check that out as well. 
Uh, so we're talking about this story out of Washington, D.C., which has a lot of similarity to some of these FBI terrorism busts over the years that have occurred, where the FBI basically encourages and gives money to and gives shelter to and, you know, it does everything they need uh, that, that needs to be done to sort of facilitate an individual into becoming a trigger man, uh, somebody who is going to trigger a bomb in a van or something like that. And it turns out that, you know, maybe this person wouldn't have done that had they not been coaxed into it by the FBI agents. Now, D.C. police are doing the same thing when it comes to armed robbery. They've been going around and plying potential armed robbers with alcohol, strippers, and even giving them guns, you know, kind of setting it up for them uh, to, commit an, uh, to commit an armed robbery, and then they come in and they bust them. Now, in the Washington Post story, it points out here that it's kind of the other side, so I'm going to give it the, uh, the police argument here. In the past two years, the D.C. police stings have resulted in convictions of more than a dozen men in federal court. And the tactic has overcome the few legal challenges it's faced in the district, but has prompted harsh criticism. Defense attorneys and some legal experts have asked whether the police should be encouraging people to commit crimes that they might not have otherwise committed by providing invented opportunities and, in some cases, guns and even getaway cars. Critics ask how law enforcement officials can distinguish between someone who's just puffing and someone who intends to carry out a crime. Because there's a lot of tough talk. Now, Mark, you're a, you're a guy who spent time in prison. So you were actually around people who did things. Like, they actually did commit crimes and hurt people. But, you know, was there a lot of tough talk in, in prison in, in, in your experience? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, pe yeah. people talk tough everywhere. Right. Um, you know, I would do this and I would do that is, uh, you know, heard everywhere. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think that... It, it, one really steps across the line when one even considers talking about a conspiracy charge. Um, it's it's one thing if you really sort of catch people in the midst of planning something. Like I know what that feels like. I I I I got that, and I understand why we want to have a charge for that. I get it, but. Really, don't we don't we want to see who's going to do what and who's not going to do what? Mm -hmm. Don't we want to see who's willing to commit a crime and not willing to commit a crime? Because this is that moment of truth. Yeah, when you're standing there with the gun in your hand, um, and you're willing to do this thing or that thing. I don't know. I so, mean, this because what the FBI did in most cases is they actually had somebody go out with a dummy detonator or something like that, plant a bomb in a trash can or whatever, and then attempt. To set it off, and mm -hmm. then they would get them, and then their case is significantly better than, hey, you know, what do you think about robbing a bank? But still, even in the FBI case, I object to it, Mark, because it's manufactured from the word go. Uh, this is a manufactured crime. These are individuals who may otherwise have not have committed those acts had they not been pressured, coaxed, and bribed into it by well, these agents. This is the problem with having the charge at all. Yeah, I don't um, like is, conspiracy charges. I, I don't like them either. Um, but if we're going to use them, we need to. We need I'm to not use using them. them. Okay. You mean the government? If we're going to sit around and allow law enforcement to use these mm. kind of crimes, well, then we need to come up with really strict verbiage. On, well, it's not good. It's, that's not working, Mark. Because, no, it hasn't uh, worked in decades. It's getting worse. Now you've got a situation where the police are just making up, uh, hey, let's go the, rob, rob the a place. The police in this country are out of control. Yeah. I mean, anybody who's paid any attention sees that the police are out of control. I don't know if we're in a police state. I don't know how you, you define a police state, but I would like to know how you define a police state because from where I sit, all the elements of a police state are in place. Absolutely. They don't affect me. Generally, I don't see a cop in my life, mm -hmm. but... I, you weren't in Manchester last night. There was a DUI checkpoint there. Right. Manchester, Warrantless New Hampshire. stops. Yeah. Warrantless stops of people Checking on their way. Checking everyone. Your papers, please. Everybody gets everybody gets stopped. Everybody gets set, asked for their license. They were, Why are you asking me for my license, officer? Why do you need to see my registration? Why have no I been stopped? no probable stop? cause to pull you over. No probable cause whatsoever. If there's a drunk person behind me, they could ram into the back end of me. So, uh, anyway, by the way, there was like four, 40 activists that came out to oppose the DUI checkpoint in Manchester, so that's awesome. Of right, course, right. The cops are out of control, but those are bad Americans. A testament to the, uh, the Free State Project and the success of the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to the same place. That's what's happening here in New Hampshire, and you can check out freestateproject.org. If you're sick and tired of the police state and the ever-encroaching uh, state on your business and your personal life. 
So again, freestateproject.org. So back to the story here from DC. I still want to know yeah. what separates what we have today from, from a police, police state. state. I really want to know. Would you like calls on that? Because we can take them at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So is your question that if someone who's listening does not believe that this is a police state, what would the criteria be for that person to agree that it is a police state? What would have to change? What would you have to see? What would right. it be that you would say, huh, maybe this is a police state? Right. So, like, my world isn't a police state. I don't live in a police state. I drive here and back. Um, you know, I drive to work and, and back home. And I generally don't see police officers. I don't have any much contact with them. I don't have any any kind of uh, beef with them. But when I read the news stories, I you know, I pay attention to the news. I'm on the talk show here. Um, I, I see many things in the news that look remarkably like a police state. So I just sort of want to know. I mean, can I live in a world that is both not a free, uh, not a police state for me, but is a police state in this country? Because that's what it looks like to me. All right. So you can answer the question if you would like. 855-450-FREE. But how, uh, asked the critics, according to WashingtonPost.com, how can law enforcement officials distinguish between someone who's just puffing, talking tough, and someone who actually intends to carry out a crime? Law enforcement officials claim they typically identify their targets through police sources and review their history before going after them. Commander Melvin Scott of Narcotics and Special Investigations, who oversees these undercover operations, says, quote, We have to feel comfortable and confident these are bad guys, the guys we want. We're not pressing these guys. They are boldly stating their job experience. On the evening of a planned robbery in September, five members of the crew met the undercover officer in a room made to look like a place where cocaine was stashed. They ordered Pizza Hut, sipped Corona, and waited for the signal from the officer's contact, a supposed drug courier who was actually an undercover federal agent. The officer gave them an out, saying, quote, If this is not your thing, that's cool, he said, according to the record of the takedown. I don't care. I'm good either way. No one flinched. We're ready, two of the men said. Moments later, there was a bright flash and a deafening bang. The SWAT team dragged out the men by their feet. Well, I'll tell you, in that circumstance, that's entirely different. <laughs> you know, the guys have been given an out. Um, they're waiting for the crime to be committed. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that people, you know, I don't think drugs should be a crime. They sell them in drug stores. Um, it's when somebody wants to do something entrepreneurially without the government's consent that they seem to have a problem. Well, I think they were just meeting in a place that was made up to look like a Coke, Coke den or whatever, but uh, the plan was to rob some sort of you know, store. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Your thoughts? Is it a police state? And if you don't think so, what would make it one for you? It's Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. 
If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bother to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Live Saturday show. Ian here with you. And Mark. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Do enjoy the features that we have on the site. We're talking to you tonight about, uh, and you can bring up anything, but right now on the, the table is the issue of setting people up for crimes that may not have necessarily occurred had the police not, oh, provided the idea, the funding, the guns, the uh, liquor, the strippers, the getaway cars, like putting everything together for these individuals who right. the police say are really bad guys and needed to go down in the first place. Um, they're basically setting them up into creating, committing a crime that wasn't actually going to happen in the first place. And I find it really disturbing. Also, that led to a larger question, Mark, that you had asked about the police state you say you don't experience it personally but yet you see all this news about let's say police killing dogs uh, family dogs left and right those things happen well, all the time there's the police all kinds abusing of using photographers right they, they act like they can't be uh, videotaped um, there's all kinds of attacks on people with cameras all checkpoints. across the country there's a lot of different checkpoints of a lot of different types there's yeah. confiscations of money out of people's cars i find that to be very disturbing you know and I, when i grew up I was, t you know, you were always taught about uh, the, the Nazis, that, you know, this, this thing about the papers, please, mm -hmm. that you needed papers to travel from one place to another. And it's getting more and more like that. Since 9-11, you've got, you can't travel to Canada or Mexico without uh, having a passport. It's just like, you know, Z uh, Real ID, the government now, the, the federal government now decides how the state governments put together their driver's licenses. You've always had to have a driver's license, but now you have to have it for more things. Let's go to the phones here and get your thoughts, uh, starting with Ryan in Charleston, West Virginia, listening to WVTS. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hey, thank you for taking my call, first sure. of all. I just want to say that in regards to the police state, I, I definitely think one aspect um, that shows that we are in the police state is that when you look at the growth of government, over the decades in terms of how many laws have been written at, at state, at local, and federal levels, um, ultimately laws, those laws do protect the interests of attorneys and the justice system bureaucrats to, and the manpower to enforce those. So I think in that regard, we are living in a police state, certainly. And um, when you talk about, you know, 
the police uh, being involved in having facilitating crimes that wouldn't have happened otherwise um, on their own, I would say that that definitely happens, and there's a lot of incidents in place for that to happen. And, uh, for example, like when people talk about HUD, HUD housing and what it's When they talk about what? Before, when, when people have talked about HUD housing and how it's helped the poor, they forget that um, that when you cram you know, a large number of people into a small area, that's going to facilitate more uh, crime, drugs, and poverty and helps to perpetuate the problem. And it doesn't incentivize them to better themselves to, you know, to get up and you know, not let, be less dependent on that and, and get out and, and work hard and you know, help themselves and their families. Yeah, and it's certainly true I that the system is created in a way that uh, makes lives less livable. It makes life more difficult. We were just talking last night in detail about the Rich Paul uh, hearings, and or maybe it was the night before that. But uh, Rich is a friend of ours who's in jail right now for selling some cannabis in the past, and he was out on probation, and they violated his probation. And you know, it's just like you always hear if you know people who've been inside this system. People get violated left and right, which means they're just you know not able to create a life for themselves on the outside, and they end up right back inside the cage. I mean, there's so many well, things about the system that discourage people from you know having a good life. What the caller mentioned here was the 40,000 laws that are written in this country every single single year. No one can read these things. No one could read all the laws in four lifetimes, it, just in this country, let alone the other countries. Well, let alone your, your state laws. Marito maritime that. law. No, I, I think that you could probably get through uh, the U.S. code in a lifetime. Then you'd have to work on state laws after that. But um, it's, you know, it this is incredible. It, it's a lawyer industrial complex uh, with the intention <laughs> that we. It's true. That, that if if you come in contact with the government at any point, you have to have a lawyer representing you, and oh. it's it's no surprise at all. Consider about it. Consider for a second. The legislative branch is full of lawyers. Would do you think that they'd create a system where you have to have lawyers to interact with lawyers? Of course you would. It, it, and absolutely, and, and you know, also too, I want to say how. You know, resourcefully and financially help with this down economy and what's happened with, you know, the Federal Reserve Banking and government's growth over, over the years. Now you look at um, the young generation and middle-aged pe uh, people and baby boomers. It's going to be so hard for the upcoming generations to be able to, you know, retire securely and and hand their offspring, you know, a more prosperous opportunity and gener you know for them to do well. And, it's, and I want to say one thing too is just you see a lot of. Now, studies about how there's more youth living at home with their parents. Well, I think if the government, you know, would have more honest thinking and not, you know, talk do a bunch of quantitative easing, mm. then I think that would help the young younger generation not have to have. Great points. I think it's arguable. Their situation. I mean, you know. Great, I mean? Ryan. Thank you for the call tonight, man. Great points. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. The uh, the deck is stacked against people who are poor. Um, economically and criminally, meaning that the, a lot of these laws, like drug laws, are really enforced on poor people far more often. There's plenty of rich people using drugs, but they're just not getting busted as often because the cops aren't as likely to pull over a Lexus as they are to pull over some beat-up old junker. And, uh, and then you factor into that the money system, like Ryan was talking about there. You factor into that the money system, uh, which is basically designed to screw people. I mean, screws everybody, but except for the politically connected who get the money that they print out first before it trickles down into the rest of the economy, inflating the money supply and then making prices go up. And when prices go up, who does that hurt the most? Hurts poor people. Of course it does. Yeah. I mean, so if, if the price of bread goes from a dollar to two dollars for a rich person... That's well, no big deal. The rich people aren't going to pay pay two dollars for a loaf of bread anyway. They're already yeah. paying six for the uh, the seven grain organically yeah. minced, uh, you know, bread that they get from you know the specialty stores or whatever they do. Let's continue here. Steve's in St. George, Utah. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live, listening to KZNU. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to end up agreeing with you, but disagree with you that we're not in a police state. Okay. I, I, I completely uh, reject that idea. I, it would be nice if it was that if it was that gentle of a concept. I I coin the concept. I call it municipal mafia. The model that we have is more resembles mafia than police. Okay. I mean, than a police state because um, they don't follow their own rules. They do whatever they want. They got their thugs out there flashbanging babies and cribs and murdering. 
journals uh, instead of bringing med- medical attention. And, you know, all this stuff, it, it, it looks far more like mafia, municipal mafia than a police state. That's an interesting well, descri- description. I mean, it's certainly what cities are. They are the most successful criminal gangs in any given geographic area. But this is true anywhere that you might claim that uh, there's a police state. I mean, I don't know that there's I don't know that there's a distinction between this. The police are the enforcement arm of the government and the government is the most successful gang in a given geographic area. This gang is usually distinguished by the fact that they fly a flag outside of their um, their headquarters. Now, admittedly, they're strange gangs that allow people to sort of vote on who their dons are going to be, mm-hmm. but the you know <laughs> the high level functionaries never change. They rarely change. Yeah. Take a look at the Obama administration. It's basically the same people under the Bush administration. <laughs> right. Well, the uh, government seems to look around and find something that's just so horrible that the common people shouldn't be doing it. But hey, let's do it. You know, like uh, Ponzi way back come up with this idea of uh, taking from uh, these people and paying these people and. And getting rich, well, the government adopted that and calls it the Social Security program. I, I would love to hear the uh, – because, I mean, I've heard rebuttals that the Social Security system is not a Ponzi scheme, but I'm aware of what a Ponzi scheme is, and the Social Security system sounds remarkably like a Ponzi scheme. And I would like somebody to call in and tell me what is the difference between the Social Security system and a Ponzi scheme. The difference is the Social uh, Security is a legalized Ponzi scheme. Well, and you're forced to, uh, to to play ball. I mean, you know, wouldn't a Ponzi scheme be awesome if you had to play? Hey, Steve, thanks for the call tonight, man. I do appreciate hearing from yeah. you. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. David is in Columbia, South Carolina, listening to WQXL. Hey, David. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. Go ahead, sir. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Uh, yeah, I believe that we are in a police state, and the reason I say that there are several reasons, but one thing that comes to mind, several months ago here in Columbia, we had an acting police chief, and there was a Facebook exchange that you might, may have heard of. Uh, there apparently was some drug bust that had taken place, and one of the Facebook participants challenged the chief, said you should spend more time dealing with the crime, as in because people were killed, getting killed locally. Uh, like that he should spend more time with- investigating real crime rather than doing a drug bust? Exactly. Hold that and thought. The- David, I want you to have time to tell the whole story, so hang- can you hang through the news? We're going to bring you back. I hope you can be back with more of commitment. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. Maybe the music was scary. It's Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,299, silver opened at $20.86, and Bitcoin is trading around $598.18. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their next meeting July 28th at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Heather Fazio from Marijuana Policy Project, Rachel Canny on winning elections, and Dr. Norman Horn will discuss the upcoming Christians for Liberty event with special guest Dr. Laura Presley, city council candidate for District 4. The Liberty Beat's own Justin Armand will be emceeing the event July 28th, 7 p.m. at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub. Texans for Accountable Government is a political action committee dedicated to creating a more free and prosperous Texas. More info at tagtexas.org. Christianity and Liberty come together in a first-of-its-kind conference planned for Saturday, August 2nd, on the campus of Austin's St. Edwards University. Norman Horn is the founder and chief editor of LibertarianChristians.com. Well, it has been the desire of a lot of my readers for some time to have the opportunity to come together and meet a lot of Christian libertarians all in one place. But no surprise that people wanted to see this happen, especially as we've been growing our presence in various corners of the web, like at our Christian Libertarian Facebook group. The all-day conference kicks off at 9 o'clock on the morning of August 2nd and will conclude with an evening social at 8.30. This is an opportunity to hear a number of Christian libertarian speakers talk about our views of faith and politics working in tandem. We have a number of great opportunities to fellowship together, to meet new people, and to discuss our views and encourage each other and equip each other to be better advocates for liberty from a Christian point of view. Peripheral events are also planned, with all liberty-minded individuals, not just Christians, invited to attend. Registration details and a full conference schedule can be found at libertarianchristians.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at corymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is The Liberty Beat. For Friday, July 25th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. House Investigators Tuesday announced that the computer hard drive of ex-IRS official Lois Lerner was only scratched and not irreparably damaged. That report from Fox News. Investigators learned that Lerner's hard drive was recoverable after talking to IRS information technology experts, according to the committee. Members of Congress say the new information raises questions about potential criminal wrongdoing because the agency previously claimed the hard drive was recycled and potentially shredded. Investigators are still trying to determine whether the hard drive was scratched accidentally or deliberately. An entire Chinese town of 30,000 residents has been quarantined off from the rest of the country after a man in a nearby village died from bubonic plague. Officials are managing 10 checkpoints around the city of Yumen, preventing travel for more than a week now, as reported by the London Independent. At least 150 people who came into contact with the victim have been placed under direct observation. On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counter... Counter... On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counterterrorism Center, which details the rules for placing individuals on terrorism watch lists, including the no-fly list. The 166-page document details what the government defines as terrorism, which includes everything from assassination and hostage-taking to destruction of government property or computers, and any act that is dangerous to property or intended to influence government through intimidation. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, 
non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBobs.com. This is the Liberty Bean for Friday, July 25th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. A prison reform group issued a disturbing new study this week calling conditions in women's correctional facilities deplorably unsexy. The report contends that women's prisons are bleak, dangerous environments with shockingly few soapy showers and erotically charged pillow fights. According to the Prison Justice Initiative, quote, it's a shame that in today's society we still have jails that don't encourage kittenish girl-on-girl -girl exploration. Prison shouldn't be a hotbed of gang violence and drugs. It should be a steamy Shangri-La where caged nymphets discover the sexuality away from the leering eyes of male society. The investigation revealed living conditions that many are calling cruel and degrading, but not in a fun or kinky way. The study's author argues that incarceration should be about more than just punishment. The purpose of prison isn't just to lock people in a box and forget about them. It's to provide opportunities for naughty girls to play nice with each other. Next up, a team of jock scientists have reportedly thrown the cure for asthma onto the roof of the lab. We'll talk to the nerds struggling to retrieve it. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll free at 855 free. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show. Username LRN.FM. Uh, with you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Uh, you will have to send a contact request if you're going to send us something on Skype. Do send the contact request first. Then you can call us once that is approved. We've been talking about the police state, although specifically what sparked the conversation was uh, several incidents that have happened in D.C. where D.C. police have apparently been, I would say, entrapping people, young men, entrapping them into agreeing to participate in a robbery and then essentially you know, plying them with alcohol and strippers in order to get them to agree, giving them getaway cars, AK-47s, pistols, you know, giving them the tools that they'll need, giving them the getaway car, giving them everything, and... Uh, Really pushing it. In fact, according to the, let's see, the Washington Post has one of the stories here. Actually, no, this is the thefreethoughtproject.com. Michelle Peterson is an attorney for one of the young men. She said the police continued to ply this young, impressionable man with alcohol, scantily clad women, and offers of obscene amounts of money if he did what they wanted him to do. And, of course, the police are arguing and saying, well, these are bad guys, that they, you know, they've got word on the street that these are bad guys, that, you know, they may have criminal records of robbery in the past, uh, and that they're just going after the bad guys. This is just a way for them to put the bad guys in the jail cells. And isn't that what people want? Um People want to be told that bad guys are getting put in jail cells, yes. And the problem is, is that at this point in time, in 2014, I want video evidence of everything the police do i am sick of su just supposing that what they're doing is true i mean this isn't 1933 any longer we don't have to you, you, you don't put, you don't shine a light in people's eyes and and take down notes we have everybody's got a cell phone on them video cameras are incredibly cheap they can be immediately hooked up to cell phones i can listen to Pandora through my car stereo off of my cell phone. You're telling me that these cops can't have lapel uh, cameras and uh, mics that show everything that they do? Why is it that we don't know what happened here? We have to speculate. Are well, they these have some really video? They they set some video up in these rooms where they were talking with these guys. Excellent. Uh, then we should be able to have trials and find out what happened. I also have a problem with the whole plea bargain system in this country. Let's go back to David though. He was in because uh, we were also talking about the larger issue of is this a police state? Asking you if you don't think it's a police state, could you tell us what it would uh, you know what would it take to make you believe that it is a police state? What are the criteria? Let's go to David. He was actually saying, uh, was getting into a story there about, well, is it the Columbia police chief, David? You barely had a chance to really scratch the surface of it. Can you just kind of recap for listeners just tuning in? Sure. Yes. It was several months ago here in Columbia, South Carolina. We had an acting police chief, and there were some crime situations going on here. And at one point, they were talking about a drug bust on Facebook, the uh, chief, or at least his office was. And there was a Facebook uh, reader or what have you that 
interject it and encourage the chief to pay more attention to actual crime versus the drug bust situation. Mm -hmm. Well, the chief uh, came back to him and implied, well, maybe I should redirect some of my resources to look into your situation, look into you. Yeah, I remember this one. Anybody who would defend, uh, you know, uh, would say anything about the drug war must be a druggie. Oh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, here I am reading that, and I felt violated from a distance because my face is on my profile on Facebook, so I didn't feel safe interjecting. However, Mm -hmm. shortly thereafter, uh, this chief showed up on a radio station, which I called in, and I let him know that, hey, you need to apologize to everyone that potentially saw this and heard and heard of this situation because this is not a third world country. At least I didn't think we were. But with the advent of social media, I'm beginning to believe that we are, you know, these beat downs. And it's like you're not allowed to be, uh, show any pride or dignity in the face, uh, in, you know, when confronted by police because they can decide right then and there. But you're going to die. Today. Yeah, they sure can. Right. Well, <laughs> I'd say you boiled it down. I'm looking at a, a story right here where a guy who had some outstanding parking tickets, some uh, a constable, I don't even know what that means, in Philadelphia was coming to his home in the morning um, at 7.30 in the morning. This guy's on his way out to go to get some donuts. He's backing out of, he opens up his garage door automatically, backing out of his car. Um, the constable felt threatened because oh he was God. coming out of, he was backing out of his driveway, shot the man, and has paralyzed him. Over parking tickets? Over parking tickets. Now, you know that this constable, he, he has, they don't name him in the article. It could be dangerous. Now, of course, safety. they named the guy they shot yeah. who had the uh, parking tickets. Um, they, they name him. And, you, know, you know this constable's not going to face any, uh, he's, <laughs> he'll be lucky if he gets desk duty. Yeah, that's just like this recent situation uh, with Eric, uh, is it Eric uh, Garner? Um, and from, my, from what I understand, the paramedics were disciplined, and this one officer that supposedly put him in the choco. I'm not sure. Which is, oh, is this this is the guy in New York who was uh, yeah, killed by police for yeah. selling Lucy's, allegedly? Right. And it's like, uh, from, what, from what I understand, it's just that one officer that was taken, his, ba- his badge was temporarily taken from him and he's put behind a desk. Well, it seems as if the whole uh, lot of them that were there should be, you know, uh, liable. Because for not stopping this insanity. Him. Right. Sure. And this is the the biggest, because I used to be the one on this show. It's been years now, but uh, I used to be the one constantly attempting to interject whatever voice of reason I could on uh, the police state conversation. And that's why the reason I ask tonight, because look, give me some hope here that we're not in a police state. Somebody call in. No one will. No, it hasn't it's happened been, yet. It's been call after yeah, call after I, call saying it's a police state. Yeah. But the yeah, fact is, is it's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not the bad apples because everybody knows that if you have a job that some people who are poorly qualified are going to get into that job. That's obvious. Well, because government. Because What's that? It's, it's frightening because, see, I, I, you know, I, I look and I listen. Uh, I'm a veteran and I, I learned how to, if you will, talk back. You know, we need to have a conversation. It's not just a one sided situation. And so I've been in situations to where I have talked back and I've been put, I've been arrested. Absolutely. I hope that, I hope that I don't have to deal with that again, you know, because it's like, who who knows what can happen. It's only a matter of time. The more interactions you have with the police, the more likely one of them is going to, going to decide to put you in some handcuffs. Thanks for the call, David. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Yeah. Well, what I haven't seen so far is I haven't seen the uprising of the good cops stopping the bad cops Mm. from stepping out of line. And that's what really concerns me here. Because what that says to me as your standard everyday American, what that says to me is that the police have a culture of us versus them. Yes, yeah, And we must protect us against those citizens and those criminals who don't understand what our job is like. We are a persecuted minority, even though we're the you know most well armed in the uh, given geographic area, we need to protect our guys against those people and the the bright shining light of public scrutiny. Yeah, you're not speculating when you say that, Mark. I mean, somebody out there listening to you might be suggesting you're speculating, but there's lots of different uh, stories that we've reported on over the years that really shows the us versus them mentality. We've talked to former police officers who will you know will, will admit that that exists. 
there was the you know the, the story out of Miami. Remember the one with the lady in the red dress? She was in downtown Miami. She was just an attorney. She was going to an appointment. Yeah. She came across a group of people that were protesting, and kind of there was this throng of police in riot gear, and she decided to join in just spontaneously, and uh, the police shot at her with uh, rubber bullets. And they hurt her. You know, they drew blood. Uh, well, they shot her. her right in the forehead. Yeah. And then, uh, and then when, laughed about it later on. There's video, right? Yeah. Of them having a, like a post- uh, Little powwow. A, a post-riot uh, yeah. powwow. And they're like high-fiving and uh, cajoling people. Did yep. you see where you caught that lady right in the forehead? Yeah. Bam! Yep. Right? Like that. Yeah. And, and then, this is not a public servant. These are- Thugs. These yeah, are bullies. Sick. One officer, not a single officer, stood up and said, "My God, I can't believe you people are how talking like that." Yeah, how dare oh you? Oh my God, you people! This disgusts me. Not one of them nope. stood up and said that. No, it was more like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> we got her." Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free, and then you get the what was it? The one with the T-shirt created by the police union. We get up early to beat the crowds at one of the RNC or DNC national DNC. committees. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And the guy was like this glowering cop with a billy club in his hands on the shirt. Free Talk Live, more coming up. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. I'm the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. There's going to be no food by February. Oh, that seems a little extreme. I find that hard well, to believe. Well, watch it happen. Hope you find Christ. You oh, mean. good luck, buddy. Thanks. What really turned me away from religion was the fact that most of them are so intolerant and nasty. What do Your you mean? life will suck unless you find Jesus. Well, I had Jesus a long time ago, and he didn't really do anything for me, so I got away from that. Right, and I can tell you that uh, if you want to have if you want to have that attitude with people, yeah. like, Good well, you better con- find Christ, or you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Then uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck converting people. Yeah, I really want to hang out with people like you, there, Keith. <laughs> I really want to hang out with people like you. So I'm sorry to those good Christians out there listening that that aren't like Keith, but it's the it's the loudmouths like Keith that uh, that do real damage to your religion and, and how people feel about it. Free Talk Live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can bring up whatever you'd like right here toll free. The live Saturday edition of the program. We will take your calls about anything, though the larger conversation tonight has been one about the police state. Is it a police state in which we are inhabiting here in the United States? Uh, the toll free number is 855-450 free. Or maybe you're not in the United States. Maybe you can tell us about your police state elsewhere because we're not the only one, I'm sure, uh, that has crazy checkpoints we had a guy call in from cameroon africa who uh, had to go through 18 checkpoints just to go two kilometers or something ridiculous or 14 kilometers or whatever anyway he was a fairly short distance and it was a lot of checkpoints involved so we've got cops killing dogs we've got uh, police checkpoints of various different types papers please dui citizenship etc you got the tsa expanding out of the airports going into bus stops train stations even on the street in some cases so it just keeps getting worse it seems uh, it was 18 stops in cameroon and 140 kilometers was it 140 was about, okay yeah, i think that's what it was well, either way, that's a lot of darn police stops. It is. It's crazy. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't have to be about the United States. That just happens to be where we are here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And uh, so the larger kind of question was, well, if it if you don't think it's a police state, then what would have to happen? What would you have to experience or know for a fact is happening uh, to come to the conclusion that it is a police state? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE as we continue here. We've actually got Dalek ANCAP on the line in Colorado via Skype. Dalek ANCAP. What's going on? And hey. you guys can call me uh, just Dalek. It's fine. Okay, um, but, go uh, But what I would like to say is that without a doubt, yes, it is. And, uh, you know, if you guys read the... Uh, uh, about like uh, what was going on with Fox News, uh, actually doing a hit piece with uh, uh, by cop uh, with Cop Lock, uh, just kind of going after them, and also Yahoo going after Cop Lock. I mean, people uh, they just still believe that the narrative is that police officers are good; they're absolutely hunky dory. Nothing could ever happen to make them, you know, kind of just be really bad. It's ridiculous. It's fucking offensive. Oh, you can't say that on the radio. And we're going to have to not. let you go on that one. Oh, Unfortunately, man. you got to remember we're doing a uh, nationally syndicated talk radio show on a bunch of different radio stations. This is not an internet show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the internet, but we got a format for radio. So yep. sorry about that. Um, anyway, not really sure where he was going with that, but you're well, welcome to comment. He's pointing out that, uh, he, you know, that these sort of the average person goes about their life, not really thinking about what is a police state. What's it take to define a police state? Do we live in a police state? Yes. Uh, we have more police officers in this country than we've ever had before. Yes. The war on drugs has been ramped up under Nixon, under Reagan, under, uh, Clinton, under Bush. And, um, um, you know, it, it just are we are we are we better off than we were? Well, crime's down. That much uh, is true. Um, well, that's not necessarily because of the police state. Um, the uh, of course the assault weapons ban expired. A lot of people will suggest that it was after more people could get guns that crime went down. Yep. I don't know what you know. That's cor it's, it's that's not necessarily causative. It's correlative, perhaps at uh, at best. But your thoughts are welcome here, and ladies come first. Tanya's on the road in West Virginia, listening on, on the radio somewhere. Tanya, where are you at in West Virginia? I'm on the road and uh, uh, traveling through West Virginia. I'm actually driving from Nevada to Massachusetts. Oh, wow. All right. So what, uh, what did you want to comment about tonight? Well, I moved to Nevada four years ago, and it is the worst uh, when it comes to a police state. Uh, they can literally shoot you in the back. 
get two weeks off of vacation and go back to work and do it again. Yeah, we actually knew of a story. I don't know if it's the same one you're thinking of, but there was a act- liberty activist out there in, the I think it was the Vegas area, who was shot in the back by police. Sterling? I forget his name. Yeah, but it was the, uh, the yeah, you're talking about, well, there's several of them that, that happened out there, but uh, there was one that was, uh, you know, a, a veteran from the Iraqi war who, mm. uh, who was just, you know, you know. Hello? Uh oh, I think we lost her. Drove through a bad cell. That's how it goes. Thanks, Tanya, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. But the thing is, everywhere where people live is the worst, right? Or at least that's the way it can seem to people. It's certainly true that some cops are better than others. Like here in New Hampshire, they're not as bad, or at least in the Keene area, they're not as bad as they were down in Florida, where I'm originally from. But a lot of people will say that their cops are the worst. Oh, you know, and then they'll tell you stories about the bad police chief or the bad cops shooting people in the back. And there's there's always something going on all over the place. There's more bad cop stories than it, like if 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 Free Talk Live were a bad cop, no donut kind of show, like if that's all we focused on, we wouldn't have a problem. It, it wouldn't be a problem at all filling three hours a night. I don't think seven nights a week of just all of the terrible abuses of, uh, you know, on the part of the police out there. And as you pointed out earlier, Mark, it's not like the good cops are stepping in to stop the bad cops from doing anything. They're just standing, either standing aside quietly and doing nothing, or they're going around, they're going along with it to make themselves look like they're one of the gang. So the bad cops don't turn against them, would be my guess. I have no clue. Um, I, I te- what I tend to think is that they're just people trying to make a paycheck, trying to get for, by day to day, which, you know, a lot of us are. Well, look what happened with our old friend uh, Brad Jardis, who uh, was a former, he was a police officer. He came out against the war on drugs during his time as an active duty police officer in New Hampshire. And it was after that where they tried to get him fired. And during one of the hearings that he had in front of the, uh, the town selectman, mm-hmm. the, one of the firing hearings, there was a cop that came in wearing a shirt with a dead rat pictured on it. What does a dead rat have to do with? Uh, I mean, what what did Brad Jardis do with that ratted any cops out? He, he didn't is, rat any cops out, but it's an interesting shirt for one of the cops on his crew or whatever to be wearing to this hearing. Yep. Well, it's 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 interesting. Like what this says is more that us versus them team mentality yeah, that I he was talking about. the thin blue line. These, but law enforcement officers are supposed to be. This is the idea. Peace officers as public servants. They're supposed to work for us, not create a team and essentially be a gang. I mean, what differentiates them from a gang? Well, as you pointed out earlier, they do fly flags in front of their offices. I'm sure gangs they, would fly flags if they thought that it wasn't a bad strategic move. They do elections to make you believe there's something different. I've from never a gang. voted for a police officer. Well, yeah, that's true. Sometimes I guess you can elect police. You can elect sheriffs uh, around here. Yep, in other you can places, elect a sheriff. In other places, some police chiefs are elected positions as well. Yep, you get uh, the choice between a sheriff uh, on the blue team or a sheriff on the red team, right. and, and they uh, both want to crush. Largely, nothing freedom. changes. Yeah. I can tell you that uh, you know here in Keene, New Hampshire, Cheshire County, we went from a um, Republican sheriff to a Democratic sheriff, and. I don't really notice anything different. Well, this year is going to be a little different. There's actually a third uh, choice going to be running in the race this year. I'm glad to hear that. I'm really excited about. um, He's actually a Free State Project mover, as I understand it. And uh, he's thrown his hat into the sheriff's race. So that can make things interesting. I think that's great. Of course, the idea of the Free State Project is to get people who care about freedom together all in the same geographic area so we could actually have a shot at turning this craziness around. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts, though. We're going to get to them coming up. You can stand by if you're on the line. We will get you on the air here tonight. Got a whole hour and a half to go. Halfway through the show, the live Saturday edition. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Get your thoughts on the air, but don't say the F word. That usually doesn't work out very well. It's Free Talk Live. 
folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I'm sure you know this economy sucks. We all realize that the American economy is tremendously unstable right now and will likely get much worse. There's monumental debt, government bailouts, stock and real estate bubbles that are primed to pop at any moment, which can flush away most or all of your retirement savings. This type of movement has enormous consequences. Virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record lows. Financial trouble is right here at our doorstep. But if you move right now and develop a backup plan immediately, this could be the most profitable time of your life. Proportionately, more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than at any time in our history. Get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789 for my free report. 888-507-8789 and prepare to profit as history repeats itself. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you're struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813, You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. Here to take your calls about anything. It's Ian with you. And Mark. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So you've probably heard about Bitcoin. Maybe you've heard about other cryptocurrencies, too. Maybe you've heard the term cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin is a is a cryptocurrency. It's a peer-to-peer cryptocurrency online currency for the next generation. It has no uh, geographical boundaries. It has no government uh, politicians or bankers uh, manipulating it or anything like that. 
it is truly, in my opinion, the most empowering thing to happen for the individual in the last decade. Maybe, yeah. maybe even longer than that. I don't know. In this millennium, I think it's the most amazing thing since the internet, as far as inventions go. You can get Bitcoins, and it's easy to do. You go to expresscoin.com. They will allow you to, you know, you can do the, you can do it sort of the old-fashioned way, money order, check, or wire transfer. That's cool. Or you can go to any um, uh, credit union in your town that has shared branching. Now, you'll want to call ahead and make sure they have shared branching. Not every credit union has it. But if you can go to a credit union in your town, likely most of America lives within 15 miles of a credit union that has shared branching. So you can go to a credit union, make a deposit in any in one of their in an account, and then have your cryptocurrency within one business day. It's um, not just Bitcoin, but Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. You can get it in Canada too. It's quite possible. Use ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. This is the fastest, safest, easy, most easy way to get bitcoins. It's inexpensive and completely legal expresscoin.com let's continue with your calls and thoughts is it a police state and if you don't think it is well what would make you think that it is like what what are the criteria what would you need to see happen or know for a fact had actually happened uh to make you think hmm yeah it's a lot worse than i thought it was let's go to paul listening in myrtle beach to wrnn hey paul hey welcome sir you're on the air I just wanted to say that in South Carolina, it's almost shameful, but I bet it's worse than other states. But we, uh, for some reason, have decided that we are no longer going to accept, uh, you know, bad sheriffs. We have 17 sheriffs out of 47 counties. 17 of them are either un under investigation or indicted, and some of them have been already put in prison. Wow. Whoa! Now, who's doing the investigation? Is it the FBI or state police? Who's in Who's in charge? I, well, we have a we have a good governor, for one thing, and and uh, I think that that's part of it. But but take for instance, uh, Lexington County Sheriff uh, Metz. He's been a sheriff. Listen to this now, forty two years. Jeez. And for the last many years, he has been. And this is the state newspaper. Okay, the indictment reads. He has been uh, helping uh, criminals get off. He's been paying for, uh, he's been uh, giving gifts to uh, judges for plea bargaining and things like that over the last several years that they go back that far, you hmm. see. Uh, now, you say, well, is that bad? I, I would, I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe even the tip of the iceberg. Oh, it usually is. So, yeah, and, and so, so it's hurtful in one way, but maybe they're trying to do something to clean it up. But that's 17 out of 47. That's huge. That, that's, the, that's a huge number. <laughs> that's like a third of the sheriffs in South Carolina that are under investigation for corruption. And that's, you know, the other 30 some uh, are not, you know, the other 30 are probably, they're probably corrupt too. It's just they haven't been caught yet. It makes you wonder about the democratic system, doesn't it? It makes, well, I mean, you're, we're told that this is a the, the, the wisdom of crowds, for God's sake. We're told that this is the best uh, way to find out who's most qualified for a job. But every one of these sheriffs sat for multiple elections and was elected likely over and over and mm -hmm. over again. But a third of them are corrupt exactly. in South Carolina. The other two thirds probably just haven't been caught. Well, hopefully that's not true. Hopefully, hopefully that, it's that, not. There, there are a lot of good ones. Yeah. Hey, Paul, thanks yeah. for bringing that to our attention tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. As we continue, we've got Carl listening in Atlantic City, New Jersey, to WPG. Hey, Carl. Uh, hello. How you doing? Good. Thanks for taking my call. You are on the air. Now, yep. Last year, uh, my uh, sheriff, he ran for a uh, Senate in our district, too, and I did everything I could to try to get him elected, but the uh, Democrat that was up for re-election, he, he got lots of monies from elsewhere, and, and there were negative things said about the sheriff. Of course, the senator had nothing to do about the negative things. It was these voting packs and whatever, and the sheriff, I've met him, he's honest, and now he's up for re-election as sheriff, but he's, he, since he's been in, this will be uh, his second term, he's expanded the sheriff department where they go into areas that are just covered by the state police where 
there's not so many of them around. And he's done a great job, and he does he does a lot of charity events and whatnot. And well, a lot of sheriffs will position him? themselves as a nice guy. I mean, there was the story out of uh, Colorado. Okay. I think it was Denver where the sheriff of that county has, you know, he won like sheriff of the year from the American Sheriff's Association. And then he got incarcerated in the jail that was named after him. Yeah, and then he got incarcerated for selling methamphetamine. I mean, so you (laughs) never really know. There's the front face these guys put on for uh, for the public consumption, and then there's the reality of who they really are. But I'm curious, you know, since you're such a fan of your local sheriff there, do you feel like uh, there's a police state in the United States? Oh, absolutely! It's a police state, and worse when when you have an officer that gets caught driving drunk and they cover it up. Oh, oh yeah, they do that. And, uh, oh, they they absolutely do it here, and and, and I don't like that. Well, why isn't the and sheriff sure, uh, putting a stop to that? Is he part of that, or is that the local cops? No, it was local. I see. It was local. Couldn't and, the sheriffs the make arrests though? In that case, I mean, couldn't the sheriff's department investigate the local police? I mean, they are uh, higher up than they are than the locals, aren't they? Well, that would be up to the, the county prosecutor and whatnot. Sheriff's it's the highest it. law enforcement officer in the in the county. Generally, that's the case. Yeah, the I sheriff agree. the sheriff can investigate anybody he wants. Well, you know, when I see him next, I'm going to ask him. There about you go, it. Carl. Thanks for the call okay. tonight. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Just because the sheriff investigates somebody does not mean that the prosecutor has to take that. Uh, and, you know, well, the sheriff can charge somebody. The sheriff yeah, can charge yeah. somebody with whatever crime, and then the prosecutor can certainly drop that charge. Yeah, that's certainly yeah. true. But if the if the sheriff investigated a local police department for corruption and brought some of those local officers up on some kind of corruption charge, the prosecutor would look pretty bad if he went ahead and just wiped away that slate Yeah, in that case. So there would be some level of public pressure put on once the well, news kind of got you, out. you got to understand that these departments tend to sort of cross higher and that kind of thing, too. You know, guys will go from one place to another, and um, sometimes they'll get to keep their pensions, depending on the, the situation. Um, so... I mean, you know, it's it's the the thin blue line goes around every law enforcement agency, except maybe the TSA. <laughs> I don't think I don't think most law enforcement people consider the TSA to be real law enforcement officers. We've got Jacob in Washington State. Jacob, you're on the air. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, um, go. hey I, I just. I just want to let you guys know, up here in Washington, you know, often we complain about voting and all that. We're ignored except for marijuana. But it, it, I find it kind of nice because uh, in the sense of police state, I mean, we are living in a police state, just to get that out of the way. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. But we don't get affected here in Washington as much. Um, there's not a lot of that. There were some problems in Seattle um, for a while, but... I don't know if it's just because you mean like when the so Seattle of, cop shot the guy to death uh, for a the whittling, deaf guy, yeah. for whittling. Whittling, the deaf deaf guy for sitting on a stoop whittling some wood, that like the stories That's like right. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like where I live, I live up in Blaine, Washington, which is really close to the border, and there's not a lot. Actually, there's not a lot of sheriffs. Period. For them to do Whatcom County is so huge. So, so we don't get a lot of it up here. Yeah, that's really what it's don't. like for me, too. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, it, it definitely yeah. helps to live away from where the sheriffs are. I mean, uh, Mark's town doesn't even have any, from what I understand. Uh, more coming up here. Thanks, Jacob, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday show. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation protection. 
Action Success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1 800 915 2955. That's 1 800 915 2955. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about what you want. You can dial in toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It has been a police state-related conversation here tonight as the conversation does tend to roll around to every now and then here on Free Talk Live. I mean, I really want to have police departments where they're out there catching bad guys, like, you know, murderers, rapists, arsonists, property-destroying folks, thefts, thieves, rather. I want to see the police out doing that kind of stuff, and I wish that's what I saw, you know? I really wish that those were the stories that we saw about police, about how they're out there taking down the bad guys. And I don't, I don't doubt that every now and then they do take down some bad guys. But the problem is when they are uh, enforcing laws that don't have victims, when they are enforcing laws that are strictly there for revenue uh, purposes, when they are abusing people, when they're abusing people's rights, when they're so physically abusing people, and when they're uh, you know verbally berating people and demanding identification from them and demanding obedience from them and not being courteous and kind, then I start to have a problem. And that's when I want to. That's that's when I want to point those things out to people when they're hurting uh, peaceful people, they're destroying dogs, destroying property, breaking into homes, 
uh, you know, even the wrong houses, raiding the wrong houses, t- terrifying people. Well, you said um, enforcing laws that uh, just generate revenue, and I'm becoming more and more convinced that just speeding tickets, traffic fines are largely just revenue generation. Uh, uh-huh. That this is, you know, armed revenue agents out there. That uh, that if if you wanted to stop people from speeding. The police are the worst possible way to do it here in 2014. Now, maybe this might have made sense in 1963, but now in 2014, it doesn't make that much sense. If you get caught for speeding, you get caught what maybe once every 10,000 times you speed. Mm. That's not going to teach you a lesson. Yeah, if you make the, the fine high enough, then certainly re- revenue will come in. But, you know, people can get away with it 9,999 times out of 100. Then you have to, of course, uh, point or out of uh, 10,000. Then you have to point out uh, that, look, you're saying that I'm causing a disturbance on the road by going 15 miles an hour over the limit. But the vast majority of people out here are doing the same thing. And you're sitting on the side of the road with flashing lights uh, I mean, that are intended to cause a disturbance, mm-hmm. making a U-turn, speeding. Break, speeding to catch me. So the idea that I'm somehow... I'm I am less dangerous going 15 miles an hour over the limit than the guy who's catching me going 15 miles an hour over the and limit. And then pulling you over and creating an obstruction in the right lane after that. Right. The- and everybody's trying to merge over. Yeah. I'm I'm a volunteer firefighter. I've seen two accidents in the few uh accidents that I've dealt with. You know, I mean, I've seen them right there happen at the stop. Why? Because there's flashing lights and people want to see a body or whatever they want to see. And so, yeah, I'm absolutely of the opinion you want to stop speeding. You should speed cameras are a heck of a lot more effective at that than um, a, a cop would be. Let's go to the phones. Your calls and thoughts. Dana is on in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, listening to WKBK. Hey, Dana. Gentlemen, how are you? Welcome, sir. You go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, a couple things here. I 100 percent agree. It's a police state. I. Long story short, I was watching the show the other night, and it was pathetic. It was about uh, these cops, vice cops, that do these stings in the cities, Chicago, other Midwestern cities, and to a lesser extent, they do it in Las Vegas also. But they were they had a halfway decent female cop out on the out on the beat there, and uh, you know she would entice these guys to pull over and talk to her, mm-hmm. and they didn't even talk about money. That was that was how bad it was. They she said, hey, you're interested in having a date, and blah, blah, blah. The, and the other cops would come right out. They would arrest what? these guys. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. They didn't even they get them agreeing guys. to a price for a sexual no, service? They, they said, are you, exactly. They, that's how bad it was. They said, you know, uh, looking for some fun. The guy says, yeah, I think I am. And uh, <laughs> the bottom line was these cops were actually on TV talking about that the guys that they arrested, the Johns, they would charge them a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to get their car back, and they were doing this six, eight, ten times a day. So figure that out. I mean, they're it's a lot of revenue. Six to ten, yeah, six to ten thousand dollars a day, uh, three, four days a week. They're doing this. It's nothing but a revenue machine. Were, well, do you, okay, I don't know if you know this detail, uh, Dana, but were they actually charging them with prostitution, or were they just getting the revenue from the car scam and then releasing them and not actually charging them and or dropping charges later if they did charge them? They didn't even charge them. Uh-huh. They, they charged them the uh, they charged them a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, and they would release them. They would take uh, and they just keep doing that over and over and over wow. again. The funny thing about it was. The guys were so embarrassed because, you know, half of them are married and yep. that. And uh, it was pathetic to watch it. I mean, it's... it's well, the guys, the victims, uh, in this case, the Johns, they just wanted to go away, right? Like you said, they're embarrassed. So they, all right, fine, I'll pay you the $1,000 or let me have my car back, you know? Yeah. That's right. Some of them were crying. I mean, it was it was, it was was amazing to see that... Uh, and they were, you know, halfway joking about it, how, wow, you know, we're grabbing 1000 $1,500 a car here and we're doing this five, six, seven times a night. I mean... Pathetic, so they were boasting. Know, and, the police were boasting about their take. They were boasting about the take, and you know, and it's a victimless crime, as far as I'm concerned. It's it's prostitution. You know, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, yeah, when you got to figure, I mean, I don't know how many how many cops were in on this one. Oh, six. It, yeah. It'd storm out. It'd storm out, and they'd all surround them like they caught you know 
the number one. Yeah, they got Al Capone. <laughs> they, got, they, they, they caught Al Capone as far as they're concerned, and plus they're on TV. Yeah, that's it. But it's, you got to consider that every one of these police officers is not just the paycheck. It's the overtime. It's mm -hmm. the pension. It's, um, yeah. uh, you know, all the bennies that they get involved in the paycheck. They can cost a department up upwards of 100000 a year. I'm not talking about— One officer. They, yeah. One officer. So this $600,000 yeah. uh, a year is what these uh, schlebs uh, are costing. So they do have to bring in significant revenue to make these peop these cops pay for themselves. Well, that's the thing about it was. They were taking in massive revenue, and the saddest part of the whole fact was Chicago has 10 or 15 murders a weekend. Yeah. Don't you think they'd be better off to get out there and prevent murders and rapes? Sure, but that doesn't bring home the bacon. Good call tonight, That's Dana. Right. I appreciate hearing from you. Thanks for Thanks. making it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Right, much harder to make a murder than it is to make a prostitution uh, bust. And I, I I really do sort of pity. I've always sort of wondered what goes on in these conversations uh, with uh, an undercover uh, police officer who's uh, posing as a, as a prostitute. Mm. Because a friend of mine used to like to yell at them out the window of the car. On your um, 41 in yeah, US 41 high, on the famous North Tamiami Trail. Yeah. Um, right? <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have you're you are communicating with some of undercover cough officers out there, and they could decide that whatever you're saying is a solicitation of prostitution. You really should not do that, <laughs> and especially in my car. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, because I don't know where in the conversation it turns from hassle talking to a prostitute to soliciting a prostitute. Yeah, well. And that was an interesting call because they were arresting the guys without ever having to have completed an agreement for the price. The classic bust for prostitution, as I understand it, is that John and the prostitute have to agree on a price for a service, a sexual service, and then it's prostitution at that point. But that's interesting that the story that uh, the gentleman Dana was telling us there was that they weren't getting to that point in the conversation. They would just arrest them anyway, and then they had this car scam, this car release thing that they were doing. Crazy. I wonder if they settled on a price for like a dinner, a movie, and uh, a walk on the beach, and then we could have sex. I wonder if they settled on that price, whether it be prostitution. If sex is included in the deal, then yeah, that would right. be prostitution. Right, like, you know, if, if sex happened to come along as a uh, as a perk for dinner, a movie, and a walk on the then beach. Then that would not be prostitution no. at that but point. But if you said that let's have sex after, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you can't contract for sex, basically. Yeah, you can contract. Unless it's porn. You can have sex. But you can't, can't contract for sex. Unless it's porn uh, and you are intending to sell the porn to other people. Yes. You don't actually have to do that. You just have to intend you have to, to do intend it. to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in God. the places where you can legally produce porn, which are, as I understand it, California and New Hampshire. You know, there are people that would defend this that are listening right now. They just won't call in because they don't defend to, what? The, the, you know, the nonsense of prostitution that we're just talking about here. The right? nonsense of it being illegal, you mean? Right. Well, you, porn can be legal, but prostitution must remain yeah. illegal. It's crazy. It's crazy. You can share your thoughts, whether it's on prostitution, corrupt cops, whatever's on your mind tonight Go uh, goes here if you make the call to 855-450-FREE. Let's go to FDLP number one in Tent City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello? FDLP number one calling from Tent City. Going once, going twice. Maybe we'll try him back in the next hour. Let's go instead to Richard in Colorado. You're on Free Talk Live, Richard. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, just in case there's any doubt, we are not only living in a police state, we're living in the most outrageous police state that the planet has ever seen. Now, that's Adolf a pretty big Hitler statement. Would, well, I can prove it. All we right. have a rate of incarceration, which is five times the rest of the world, Good eight point. times what England, England, France, and Germany have, ten times what the Scandinavian countries have. That's a great yeah, point. No we hadn't even about. really talked about the prison uh, industrial complex here. Stand by. I suspect you had more to say. Richard, we're going to bring you back here. Can you hang through the news with us? Oh, yeah. All right. More with Richard in uh, Colorado. And your calls and thoughts are welcome. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. 
When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch solid pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and License Plate Bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro Stopping Centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, July 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.73 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,308 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $598. Antiwar.com reports the U.S. House of Representatives, in an attempt to assert some measure of oversight over future wars in Iraq, yesterday passed a non-binding resolution attempting to bar President Obama from sending troops to Iraq for a sustained combat role without prior congressional authorization. The Senate isn't so far considering such a bill, and the administration has long claimed the ability to engage in military operations without congressional authorization at any rate, so its impact is unclear. It does, however, coincide with a letter from Susan Rice saying the administration urges the repeat of the 2002 authorization for use of military force in Iraq, saying it was no longer necessary and would increase public confidence that a new invasion is not imminent. The letter suggests President Obama is not eager to continue precipitous escalation back into Iraq, though at the same time, it reiterated the promise to take targeted and precise military action to to protect U.S. interest in Iraq, irrespective of any authorization. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a state judge struck down Florida's gay marriage ban on Friday in the latest in a string of legal gay rights victories that have nonetheless been put on hold for resolution by higher courts. Circuit Court Judge Sarah Zabel in Miami-Dade County said Florida's ban violated the constitutional right to due process and equal protection, as well as offended basic human decency. Florida's Attorney General quickly appealed the ruling, but Zabel said the slew of recent verdicts showed that it is increasingly obvious it is not permissible to deny couples the right to marry solely on the basis of their sexual orientation and that doing so served no governmental purpose. She wrote, 
It serves only to hurt, to discriminate, to deprive same-sex couples and their families of equal dignity, to label and treat them as second-class citizens, and to deem them unworthy of participation in one of the fundamental institutions of our society. Since the Supreme Court ordered the federal government last year to extend benefits to legally married gay couples, every federal and state court that has taken up the issue of same-sex marriage, about 20 courts, has ruled against the ban. Most of these rulings are on hold. Don Price Johnston, a 44-year-old plaintiff in the Miami lawsuit, said he was thrilled with the ruling and that he did not mind that it had to be stayed for now. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Israel's far-right security cabinet was unanimous in its opposition to the U.S. proposed ceasefire measure yesterday, and its more hawkish members are being increasingly public about their opposition to ceasefire in general. One of the cabinet members warned in comments to the press, if BB ends it now, he's finished. And another insisted Israel's survival depended on ensuring that no ceasefire was reached. These aren't political opponents of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu either. Some are members of his own party. So while Netanyahu is said to be getting cold feet about the further escalation and looking for a way out before the Israeli military toll gets too large, the risk of losing his own party support is keeping the war going. Israeli media reports say Netanyahu's primary planning for the war is done with Defense Minister Moshe Yalon and Justice Minister Zibi Livni, comparative moderates on the Security Cabinet, but how they will ever muster a majority to end the war remains unclear. Looming large is not only the risk of new Likud splits, but Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman or someone else forcing early elections as a result and trying to parlay the peace into a new, even more pro-war coalition. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In local news, 23-year-old graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tisolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tisolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tisolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery and the fact that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. His art is really just the absolute worst. I think we're going to get married someday. And now for This Week in Tech, brought to you by LG. An excited groom sends text messages to his buddies during his bride's vows. And a collection of VHS tapes are held onto for one more year. In other news, a burglar makes sure to crack the glass on a family portrait before leaving. There's nothing in the employee handbook about groping dead co-workers, an employee says. And a report finds that nobody's heard from David Blaine in a while, so somebody should probably check to see if he died in one of those things. Mere seconds have passed, yet we feel as though we've known you a thousand lifetimes. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want right here, toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. With you in studio here, it's Ian and Mark. And we've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Lots of talk tonight about corrupt cops. The police state. Is it a police state? So far, I think everyone has agreed that it's a police state. And I, I would love to uh, get somebody on the line who doesn't think so who would maybe be able to outline for us what parameters, what the uh, criteria would be for that person to, for you perhaps, if that if that is you, uh, for you if you don't think it is a police state, to believe, to, ch- to change your mind, to to start believing that it is actually a police state. What, what would that be? What Most would look of the like? conversations I've had with people that say this isn't a police state uh, have to do with sort of pointing out how specific departments work or their area where they live. And they don't really have anything to do with sort of how things are in America as a whole. 
Sure. I mean, the the experience with the police living in a small town in the woods is going to be different than, say, in the urban centers of New York City or Philadelphia, where stop and frisk is a real problem, where the police are just stopping people on the streets and frisking them (laughs) because they don't like the way they look or they don't like the color of their skin or they don't like the neighborhood that they're hanging out in or whatever. Plus, they have a quota of people they have to stop and frisk. Yeah. So obviously, certain things are a lot worse in, I think, some of the big cities out there, but even small town cops could be very, very corrupt uh, as well. Let's continue, though. You can bring up anything that's on your mind, and let's go first to, I think Richard was on the line in Colorado. He just barely had a chance to really get some thoughts out there at the end of the last hour. So go ahead, Richard. Yeah, basically, um, the, this the main part of this whole police state started when they privatized prisons back under Nixon. And that would have been They privatized prisons Nixon. under Nixon? That's right. It's over 40 years. Huh. Over 40 years. and It took and a long time for it to really sink in. I mean, private prisons weren't even that common in the, the early 90s. Well, it takes a while to build them, but yep. I'm saying check it out. Check it out on the, on the oh, computer. I believe anyway, you. If you say it, I mean, it's fine. We'll, we'll work under that assumption. Yeah. No, but please, please. Uh, I mean, I, I've been wrong before, and I, you know, I think it's necessary for. But us why? To why would that, private that, prisons be the the crux of the issue for you? What is? What do you think the reasoning is? This is. Gee, it's the whole country from the beginning. Uh, first of all, it's built on lies. We stole it. Uh, from people who had only lived here for 130 well, centuries. I did not Being steal wild, it. I will. Yeah, I will. Did. I was not there. Nope. I was born in no, 1980. I'm saying, I'm saying that the same people who are now promoting this are the same ones, the pseudo-religious, uh, genocidal maniacs that are promoting this were the same ones who did that. Okay. Uh, like I say, 113,000 years is how they figure how long they'd lived here. Now, they weren't the nicest people in the world either. Some of them, some of them were very enlightened people. But, and, 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 and try this on for size. And I'm an old fart. Uh, but in, in any case, I've thought about this for the longest time. I really don't, I think that humankind is unmanageable, but uh, we're also very gullible. And that's how come we can stand here, the average person can stand here thumping their chest saying, we're the moral leaders of the world, when in fact, we're genocidal monsters, and we always have been. Most of the world is. I've traveled, uh, I've traveled extensively trying to find a place that is truly uh, civilized, and I still haven't found it. Mm. Um, and, and like I say, I'm old. But I hear I can't tell you exactly where the line is when we become a police state, but I, I've thought about this and tried this on for size. The difference between a democracy and what we have starts it started. It never was this country. Never was a democracy because they just continued uh, the same mental uh, stupidity that the, the, that the monarchies had had. They said, "Well, government's got to be." A stern father figure. It's up to us. Um, it's up to us to judge and, and figure out who to give freedom to. This is what we've always done. Look at slavery. What they did was they systematically re, uh, um, made people second-class citizens. It took them a while. They had to actually think up a little way of achieving it. But they said, "Well, black people are only two-thirds of a human being," and everybody said, "Yeah, uh-huh, that sounds good." And so they initiated that little program. Well, mm-hmm. so, so here's what, what I would done. suggest is is that um, you know yeah slavery slavery was around for has has been around for a long time and you know just the the most recent iteration in this country had to do with uh, with um, you know people of color but uh, you know I think that really in you know as far as the police state goes I think it comes down to when you go after people for victimless crimes, for crimes that have no victim, that's when you've got a police state on the inevitable yeah, police state. I would state. track it to because, the war on drugs, personally, well, as a major step toward the police state, right, not because just now the you prison have to, system. Now you have, uh, well, the dog barked, uh, we can go in the house. You, no longer do yeah. you have, uh, the, the Fourth Amendment's eviscerated once you've got the war on drugs. Um, you know, we, we've got to check people's cars, they might have joints in there. And, and that, that was stuff. a real reason for more prisons to be built as well, because they're filling them up with, uh, with black people, drug <laughs> criminals. Hey, Richard, thanks for the call and sharing your thoughts tonight. Toll-free number is 855-453. They got rid of uh, black chattel slavery and replaced it with incarceration. We have a different Richard. This one's in Virginia listening to WNIS. Hello, Richard. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, what I've got to say is pretty much personal, what I've experienced in my lifetime. And I've I've been on both sides. I've been arrested, found guilty when I wasn't guilty. I was innocent. Um, but I've also seen a cop beating the fool out of someone and removed the baton from the cop's hand. But I've also been in a situation as a landlord in my city, in the inner city, where the police have come up and saved my life. Mm. So, you know, I'm on, yeah. as far as the police state, that they are our last line of defense against the criminals in my mind. And I, I shake their hands when I see them, and I appreciate what they do. Hey, look, I, I, I wave at police officers, too. I, I see nothing wrong with having happy cops. I've told them thank you when I've seen them do the right thing, when I've seen them actually go after a real criminal or stop a fight or something like that. I, I've said thank you. I want to praise the police when they do the right thing. But there's so many times when they're not doing the right thing, and I'm not going to stay quiet I, about it. Yeah, really all I would claim I, is we need half the cops that we currently have and no war on drugs and that you would have a significantly better America. Well, the war on drugs is the next part I'm getting to. As the landlord, I'm in neighborhoods where drug dealing is prolific, and I had the tenants complaining that the drug dealers are being very violent, which they are. A four-year-old killed recently in drive-by and crazy things like that, and they can't go out at night. But as soon as the cops do roll up to try to take care of the problem, which is the the hood-style guys who are fighting for territory— they're the first ones up in there trying to give the cops a hard time arresting the ones who are creating the, the problem that makes the neighborhood unsafe. And I, 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 I ask them, I say, well, why are you back in the drug dealer now? Well, the cops, you know, they just have an attitude towards the cops that I hate to say it, but what I'm hearing from you guys is just going to make it worse. You know, that, you know, everybody's looking for the bad side of the cops. Uh, they see them pull up. Uh oh, they're running. Well, the you know, fact is, the reason why there are drug hey, dealers. Hey, on the streets at all is because drugs are illegal. So if drugs were legal, then you wouldn't have a problem with people right. str- slinging crack on street corners because you could go and buy it from Winn Dixie or Walmart or Walgreens or wherever. Right. You said you 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 own some property in a drug neighborhood, but the fact is every neighborhood's a drug neighborhood. Um, the <laughs> you're just you just own property where some people go to buy it on the streets, and if. Sure. If, if we're talking about, you know, the most prolific l- drug out there, alcohol, you can go into stores and buy that. And usually the only crime that surrounds uh, liquor stores is people robbing it for money. Um, that's if if drugs if drugs were legal, you would see far less usage like they do see in Portugal and um, Amsterdam and the places that have decriminalized it around the country. There's there's less violent crime in California now, 10 years after 10 or so years after marijuana, basically legalization. Uh, I mean, we can see less crime. We can see lower uses of uh, illegal substances. If we just decriminalize them. Richard, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The number for you to take control of the airwaves. It's toll free and brought to you by Pro XPN. The number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I wish I didn't have to talk about bad cops. I wish that there weren't any terrible stories out there for us to tell. But I don't want to try to paint some sort of fake picture of this rosy America where every cop is Mr. Nice Guy and they're trying to help people. I don't see that happening. I see many of the police helping people into jail cells who could be productive members of society. They weren't busted for some stupid drug violation. Rising gas prices taking a bite out of your travel budget? Here's something to chew on. You can get more mileage from your travel dollar by staying at America's Best Value Inn, where you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, HBO, and internet at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Plus, join our free value club for room discounts, upgrades, and other instant rewards. Visit AmericasBestValueInn.com. With value in our name, you know you're getting a great deal. Yum. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian berry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. 
With the debt to GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. And we have been talking about the police and, you know, what I think an ideal situation for the police to, to, uh, to exist in would be like actually having peace officers who only go after criminals who hurt other people. (laughs) What a radical idea. We'll continue here with your calls and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. And if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them that critical edge that they need. Over at modup.net, they make it affordable for everyone, like you, to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality. They care about purity and potency, and it's consistent to that of the branded version. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net, by the way, you get a discount when you pay with Bitcoin, a huge discount, 33% off for paying with Bitcoin, and to make the deal even better, whether you're paying with Bitcoin or not, use code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order at modup.net. That's M-O-D-U-P, modup.net, code FTL. It's world-class service at a great price, modup.net. As we continue here with your calls, by the way, our Skype number or name or whatever, our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's go to Bernie. He is in North Florida. Bernie, where are you at in North Florida? 
Just outside Tallahassee. Outside of Tallahassee. So you're listening to WVFT. Welcome. You're on the air. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Sure. Um, real quick, didn't want to waste too much of your time. Uh, I've been in the private security, uh, private investigation business for about five years. Um, just decided to start going back to school to get a criminal justice degree to maybe, you know, move up and all that crap. Um, and one of my instructors gave us an assignment maybe about three weeks ago. I don't remember the content of the assignment, but I do remember that I used the term peace officer um, to refer to the police. And the instructor contacted me and said, hey, listen, uh, just for reference, you referenced the state of Florida, and the state of Florida doesn't use the term peace officer anymore. Now that the approved term is law enforcement officer. Mm-hmm. And like you just mentioned, that's some that's a big mentality thing. And I, you know, being around this business, I've gotten to know many officers, good and bad. And uh, that mentality, you can see a lot of the more old school people, the guys that have been around. And, and I even have friends up in Georgia who their state still uses the peace officer terminology. They still are certified peace officers. Yep. And just in that mentality between places and, and people who've been brought up in the peace officer mindset and law enforcement mindset is two completely different worlds. It you know, absolutely is. And you can tell just by the names. The, you know, the, and exactly. it's interesting that they are so uh, aware, right, that this is, a, this is a distinct change of terminology to go from peace officer to law enforcement officer. One term focused on restoring peace, the other focused on enforcing laws. Enforcing, in a lot of cases, really stupid, dangerous, counterproductive, and destructive laws that are passed by legislatures. I would want officers to be peace officers because I would want a peace officer to take a look at a law that comes down from the legislature and look at that law and say, whether or not to decide whether or not they believe that the peace will be increased by the existence of that law or that that law is in point of fact actually destroying people's peace and that law enforcement or the uh, peace officer in that case should say, screw this thing, I'm not enforcing it, I'm going to keep to my task of keeping things peaceful. Because a lot of these laws, these malum prohibitum laws, these are prohibitions, for instance, on drugs is a good example, or prostitution as we were talking earlier, these laws do not create peace. They make life more difficult for people. Right. They create strife. They create difficulty, conflict. They ruin people's lives. And the police are responsible for that. And uh, and they need to take responsibility for that. And they need to apologize. They're not the only ones who are responsible yeah. for it, but they are responsible in that they have, they have participated. Right. They're perpetuating that system. And they could stop it. They could say no if they wanted to. Uh, but go ahead, Bernie. Other, uh, other thoughts you want to share? Well, that's just that. You know, I've gotten to know several people who are uh, instructors at various police academies throughout both Florida and, and Georgia. And one thing that I've noticed, uh, I was talking to a buddy up in North Georgia, um, one of the few good officers left in this country, I believe. Um, and he was saying that he's becoming disturbed by the fact that they're starting to, up until he said about three weeks ago when they just started their new class, um, they're teaching strongly. They were teaching Conflict resolution. Yeah, you, you have to know the law. You have to know when it's appropriate to enforce certain laws, make arrests and all that, which is important. But they used to focus heavily on conflict resolution. And, you know, when they're standing in your house because you had a problem or when they deal with you beside the road, how to solve the problem effectively before they just start hooking people up and taking them to jail. And the people I know in the academy system here in Florida, I asked them after I talked to my buddy, I said, what do you guys do? And they said, oh, we've been teaching it that way for for." years, 15, 20 years already, you know, they're just teaching, hey, we enforce the law, we take people to jail as opposed to we had hey, a um, all right. That's escalation. Yeah, we had a police uh, officer trainer guy that we had a chance to talk to, and I mean, yeah. just, Jeff. it's it's not like I had him, uh, you know, ask for his cred or anything. But my God, this guy seemed so legit with the you know the haircut and the way he looked. I mean, like he looked like he'd snap me um, in half if that's what he felt like doing. And he said that he's been teaching guys for three decades, uh, people coming through the, the cadets for three decades, and that the that the quality has just been diminishing over time. It was so frustrating for him that he quit his job eventually right. he couldn't take it anymore because he said that 10 maybe 10 to 15 percent of any any given class were what he would consider to be material for being a cop the rest of them he described as badge heavies and real bad news people yep and and the more the system keeps going in the direction and projecting that law enforcement image where you get pretty much the run of the place if you have a shiny badge and a pretty car 
you're going to start seeing more of those people yep. and less people who get into the business because they want to help other people. And there should be fewer cops. Right? It should be harder to be a cop. And they should fire the 5% worst people at the job every single year. You can't fire government bureaucrats. Hey, Bure- Bernie, great call. Thanks for making it tonight. I actually gave Bernie a uh, preference. He had called in the call screener, put pro police in the uh, in the call screening software, and it sounded like he was actually pretty critical of the current police situation. And I think that distinction between peace it's, officer and law enforcement officer is so important. It's really difficult. Um, it's, you know, I mean, I don't, wouldn't call myself anti-cop. I sadly work in a line of work where no. I end up seeing these stories day after day after day. Um, I mean, I, I really have never met anyone who just hates cops. It's that, uh, I mean, you know, sadly, these people are given. I've met some people. Bad jobs. Okay, fine. Um, you know, bad jobs to do. Uh, they're just normal folks doing their line of work, and they end up with these, you know, sociopaths that they work mm-hmm. with now and then. And you got to figure out how to deal with that. I'm not anti-cop, but I am anti-law enforcement officer, and I am pro peace officer. That's what I want to see happen. I want to see peace officers. I almost think that the peace officer term is something they hide behind. He said Hardly right there. Hardly anybody uses it. What's that? Hardly anyone uses it. He said it Georgia these days. still uses the term, and I you don't can think. Call, you can ask uh, in New Hampshire as well, and they will identify as a peace officer. But uh, you know, I know the difference, and I can tell when one's acting as a peace officer and one of them's acting as a law enforcement officer. When they're arresting a teenager on the streets for open container in the college neighborhood, that's not uh, that's not a peace officer right there. That's a law enforcement officer. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Peace officers have should have compassion and empathy for people. And when they're acting as law enforcement officers, it's like they turn that stuff off. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenevention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenevention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308.
Welcome back to the War for the White House Bunker. A troubling new report from the Shuttleworth Institute shows that due to Facebook, every potential candidate for the 2040 presidential race, no matter how smart or accomplished, is now completely unelectable. I'm standing in the 2012 Democra grid with Jason Copeland. Jason, walk us through this. Yeah, we're looking at really a political crisis. The Democrats are currently searching uh, basements and uh, creepy backyard sheds huh. in search of somebody who was kidnapped at a young enough age that they have no online presence. That is a very interesting Could tactic. Be an option. And the GOP has been looking at this young man. This is a 20-year-old Jeevis Jones. He's currently living in Appalachia with his uh, fundamentalist Christian grandmother and no so, electricity. So Jeevis has no Facebook page. Jeevis does not. In fact, he's completely illiterate. And uh, the Republican Party has begun grooming him for uh, a possible candidacy in 2036. All right. Well, at least there's someone. Thank you, Jason Copeland. Thanks, Andrea. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. Plenty of time for your call and thoughts. Dial on in. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. With you tonight, Ian here. Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features. They're completely free. Now, it's thanks to great sponsors like ProXPN. They're the sponsor of our phone lines here. ProXPN is a global virtual private network. Private, meaning they encrypt your data, meaning that everything that leaves your computer has been encrypted before it leaves so nobody can snoop on your data. Maybe the uh, the administrator at the coffee shop that you're logging into your credit card and, you know, your credit card account from. They can't snip those packets out. Nobody with a Wi-Fi packet sniffer is going to be able to crack into it. And importantly, your ISP will no longer know where you're going and what you're doing online. They can't. They won't be taking logs of the things you're doing anymore because they will have no clue what you're up to right now they're probably logging every website you visit for up to five years in some cases everybody with a computer needs this because the fact is that somebody maybe it's the government maybe it's somebody else is trying to find out about everybody online and this is the first step in protection yeah and it's free you can go to proxpn.com ftl grab their software windows macintosh ios devices android devices even linux users you can get proxpn working it's just a little bit of a different setup there proxpn.com ftl you can try the free account out it is uh, bandwidth limited however so if you want to upgrade to premium you will get unlimited bandwidth you'll get servers around the world you can connect to and the ability to privately torrent plus you can get around regional blocks on websites so check it out at proxpn.com ftl they got a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. Promo code FTL20 gets you 20% off the lifetime of your account. Promo code FTL20 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. John's in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, listening to WRNN. Hey, John. Yeah, I want to disagree with y'all on the law enforcement. Oh, thank goodness. Finally, someone to disagree. Yeah, uh, I'm a, yeah I know, right? I'm a, I'm a libertarian, and um, I've been put in jail. Um, I've been pulled over for bogus reasons. I just got a speeding ticket in North Carolina for doing the 80 and the 75. But because of my demeanor, the law, the law officer lowered it down to a 75 and a 60. Huh? What? It kept your break. Wait fact, a second. You were in a 75 zone, and they gave you a— It don't matter. I was pulled over doing 80 and a 60. 80 and a 60. Okay. I was trying to I figure out— I thought you said 80 and a 75. Yeah, okay. I was. Uh, I misunderstood no, what you said. And he lowered down to a 75 because of my demeanor. I yeah, I've, I've felt really grateful when they've given me tickets, too. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen to me. No, 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 no. Let me let me get where I'm going with this. All right. Go ahead. I was, carry, I, I, I was carrying my family, my kids. With certain law being in place, regardless if you call it dictatorship or whatever, it puts in place a fear, and which sometimes saves lives. Now, I live in the neighborhood that's adjacent to a Section 8 apartment complex. I had a problem back in 2008 with gangbangers after the election coming through the neighborhood, cussing, raising cane, and causing a disturbance. Now, I could not touch them. I could not say anything, anything to them. But what happened is they eventually ended up cussing my kids and my mother. And what I did is I did not call the law. I built a full-scale replica of a World War II Sherman tank, and I placed it in my front yard. Out of what? <laughs> now, because, of, because of that fear, guess what? They quit coming through the neighborhood. <laughs> you seriously built a full-scale replica a, of a Sherman tank? Of no. a Sherman tank. Yes, I did. 
Yes, I did. You mean Both the kind that they landed on the beach in D Day? Did it have the little propellers on the back? Yes, too? sir. I had a fifty cal. I had a fifty, a fake fifty caliber machine gun on top of it. You hear me? I want to see pictures. I want to see pictures, John. I had I had the police where I where I was living come to me and say, uh, "What is this?" And I told them, "That's my deterrent to crime." <laughs> they looked at it. They said, "Okay," but with the, it's the nature of violence. It's dog chasing after a cat. We have to have this fear. I was. Told, I don't know if I believe you. Okay, I'm fine with fear. fear. I, I don't. Ha- I don't have that disagree with dr- disagreement with you on, with you on fear, John. That's not what my claim is. Um, however, I would. Um, how do you create that fear? Is an entire a different different thing entirely. Building a plywood Sherman tank, um, no big deal. But when you you know, incarcerate people uh, wrongly, have a war on uh, you know malum prohibitive laws, you know people. Uh, you know, people not hurting anyone, throwing them in jail. The largest police, uh, the, the largest incarceration rate in the planet, 10 times what uh, countries in Europe have. I mean, that might be going overboard. No, I know. I understand what you're saying. Trust me, I've done more research on this probably than y'all have with the MRABs, the six billion rounds of ammunition, all the weapons that the IRS has purchased, and only that homeland security. The FEMA camps that's supposed to be in, which we see them enacted now, with the illegal immigration that's coming across our borders. We see it. The counter action to that is the Second Amendment, which this country is practicing in full blown force to the government. Well, the Second the Amendment hasn't stopped the police state. No, but it, it's going to. And when? that's the fear that we bring upon them. But that's our fake tank, is the Second Amendment. They can stock up on their ammunition. We've already stocked up on ours. Yeah, I don't I don't think violence is gonna solve the problem. It's not I mean, violence. It's not, it's not violence. You bring me your judicial problem, and I will take you to court, and I will fight you in court. And then if I found innocent, I will sue you. Well, well hold on. Okay, you, now you just said something different, The Second right? Amendment has nothing to do with suing. The Second Amendment's uh, right. No, no. <laughs> it's about it guns. Does, but that's just it. That keeps them at bay. It keeps them from going over. What does the Second Amendment? Well, that doesn't make any There's sense. There's cities where guns are Wait, banned. Hold on. Here, Think here in this country, there are ten times the guns that there are in European countries, and there's ten times the incarceration in this country than there are in European countries. So therefore, you've got a you know your claim that somehow guns, which we have ten times the amount of, which I'm fine with, by the way, I'm fine right, with you. Having I don't those. care about uh, that. No, what you got different from the ten times of the, all the countries of the scenario you played. Because we have ten times a different culture. There's we a lot of different cultures in Europe. The fact is, is that so they we have uh, a lot of different cultures in this country. Yeah, we do. A lot more than Europe. A lot more than Europe. I don't know about that, but things are. Check your census. Check your census facts. And that's why we have such a high crime rate. And because not under a dictatorship, but wait, under a wait, wait, wait. What? What was your reason why there's a high crime rate? Check the because census. Because of our different cultures. The, because of the cultures. Populations that yeah, you got Chinese, Japanese. Yeah, I don't think so. African Americans. Caucasian. I, I don't think that's the reason for the Cuban, the high crime rate at all. Oh, there's I plenty do. of uh, there's I, plenty of white people hurting white people. There's plenty of Koreans hurting Koreans and blacks I did, hurting I blacks. Didn't bring race into it. You brought race into it. I didn't bring race into it. I said different people from different countries. Uh-huh. You're the one that brought race you said into cultures, it. didn't you? You're the one that brought race into okay. it. You said I'm check the census, which suggests uh, um, checking people's racial background, doesn't it? I didn't say racial barrier. I said different cultures. You said check the different census. Fine. There's Chinese attacking Chinese. There's Japanese attacking Japanese. I've never heard the Chinese going after the Japanese in this country. Bull crap. You got boy, you got blacks living in freaking Mexico. You got boy, whites living in freaking China. You got people. It doesn't matter. It's the culture in which you bring people together. Thanks for we the call, John. I appreciate culture. hearing from you tonight. I, you know, I don't think that that's the case. I think that cultures, different cultures, can get along just fine with one another. Uh, for instance, at the, uh, the, the the Porcupine Freedom Festival, even within our own Liberty community, there are different cultures that exist. There's the family crew that wants to do family activities with one another, like different races too. And well, right. But he was talking about cultures and people from different countries. Uh, there were, there's the group of people that just want to, you know, they want to have a good time. They've got the party thing going on and they're camping and they're having a blast. 
and everybody can get along together. In fact, most people get along just fine in different. Right. Make, you know, go you go to Chinatown. I get served when I go to Chinatown. I don't feel like I'm I'm threatened. This, the, the, I, it's it's well, it's ludicrous. I'm sorry to tell you. The fact is, the whole criminal problem in this country is based around the war on drugs. If you it's want, a big chunk of it. it well, it, the, the, the you know, the, the, even most of the violence goes along with the war on drugs. Oh yeah, I mean, theft. It, the same thing happened during prohibition. Yeah, you'll still have domestic violence. Um, even with you, if you get rid of the war on drugs, but I, I think that you'll have, you know, the, when uh, violence is less of a uh, so prevalent in a culture, that you'll even see less of that. So um, what I mean by that is, is that you know, when you don't have the drug culture forwarding violence, then people will resort to violence less often for things that have nothing to do with drugs. It's true. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. And it really, um, the fact is, most places are fine with people mixing together. It's gone, it's gone sp- swimmingly. People have been uh, marrying interculture. They've been marrying interrace. They've been marrying, you know, internation, international, whatever. whatever. People are different, but yet we all mostly get along just fine. Otherwise, it would be hell on earth. It's free talk live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Got a simple question for you. Can you sell? Yes? Okay. Can you sell the intangible? If yes, and you'd like to work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, with no overtime, no weekends, if you're passionate about not closing sales, but about opening relationships, if you truly have a desire to serve global clients who need your advertising expertise, and you're local to the Twin Cities and Burnsville, are hardworking, self-driven, with experience in sales, marketing, or advertising, are personable and a whiz on the phone, GCN wants to talk with you right now. GCN, the Genesis Communications Network, is one of the largest largest independent talk radio networks in the world and we're hiring right now we offer benefits and an excellent commission structure experience preferred but we'll train the right person is that you submit your resume today to advertise at gcnlive.com again that's advertise at gcnlive.com come work with the genesis communications network an equal opportunity employer What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. 
there are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. We'll do our best to get your call on if you're already on the line. If not and you want to still talk to us, well, tomorrow night we've got the live Sunday edition of the show hosted by Mark and uh, Stephanie and Brian, I believe, will be in with you tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can join us then. And online, of course, in the meantime, we're always at, over at freetalklive.com. But maybe you don't get the, uh, the Sunday night show on your local talk station. Well, you can help change that. Just contact your local talk station's program director. If you are already getting some Free Talk Live, thank them for adding Free Talk Live to the station and keeping us there. And then ask them real nice to get more, because we do it seven nights a week, live from 7 to 10 at night Eastern Time. Join us anytime you want. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Skype username is lrn.fm. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention. It's coming up uh, this October, actually October 31st through November 2nd. It's going to be the second annual Keenvention. It was so great last year. I had so much fun with it, and I think the attendees enjoyed it as well. We're on track, I would say, so far. I was kind of comparing last year's sales figures with this year's sales figures, and I'd say we're about on par. Maybe one more ticket has sold this year uh, than last year, so I'd say we're on par for a similar size event. But then again, you never know what's going to happen in the last month or two as people tend to get in and kind of kick into gear and get the last-minute tickets. That sort of thing. Sure. Ticket price is 60 bucks. That gets you in for the entire weekend. That's a full access ticket. And uh, a keenvention is, of course, your excuse to come check out New Hampshire in the fall. This is an activist convention. This is a, a convention that's going to focus on the activism that happens here in New Hampshire. We talk a lot about the Free State Project on this show. The idea of getting liberty-oriented people together in the same geographic area. Well, we're going to take some of those superstars, some of those doers, the people with their boots on the ground in the legislature, in the streets, the cop blockers, the civil disobedience, uh, the, the media producers. There's all kinds of different activism happening here, and I want to focus on as much of it as we can with the people who are here in New Hampshire. So it's a great excuse to come check out the scene, check out the community, and uh, explore the state a little bit up here at Keenvention. Go to keenvention.info. You can watch videos from last year's Keenvention, and you can grab your tickets online for just 60 bucks through Eventbrite with any major credit card. And then there's also Bitcoin. We'll take uh, your tickets in Bitcoin. So you can do that over at keenvention.info. Let's go right back into the phone calls here. Dave is in Humboldt County in California listening to K. G-O-E. Hello, Dave. I had a thought for you on the police abuse issue, but I have been on hold for more than two hours, so I guess I've got a hot topic you don't particularly want to discuss, and that is big corporate special interest. If they want to rip the people off, they have but to make big contributions to the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and both and the whole government will look the other way while crooked banks, crooked corporations rip us off and they will do nothing about it. And that's the topic I wanted to discuss. I agree completely. Well, yeah, it's not like that we don't want to discuss uh, something, Dave. It's just that we want to get different voices on the air. And, uh, you know, you're a frequent caller to the show. So folks who are new to the program tend to get priority. And uh, so here you are now and go ahead with your thoughts. Well, as far as the police brutality thing, one of them, I've been a peace officer much of my life, is that uh, training is that if one draws his gun and starts shooting, assume he's doing the right thing, draw yours and start shooting the same way. So and they don't say, use your own good sense, use your own judgment. Mm. The cop might be wrong. They say, if he does it, you do it. That's, I yeah, think that that's, doesn't seem like a good policy. It seems no, like what's but, used, though. Yeah. Dave, others, other thoughts you want to share? Go ahead. Well, I think we ought to put a little more thought into the issue of how do these big, corrupt Wells Fargo, Travelers Express, B of A, have the right to rip us off? And 
they pay off both parties and the parties look the other way. That's an issue I think should be coming up more often. That's not a call that should be left on hold damn near through the whole show. Well, Dave, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You got a chance to get on the air and you want to spend time complaining about how you had to wait for well, it. It's frustrating um, to, to sit on hold. There's no doubt about it. But, um, I mean, you know, the, the the fact is is that here on Free Talk Live, we have to prioritize calls as yep. we prioritize calls. And um, you know, yeah, I didn't know what Dave wanted to talk about when before he got on the air. We get like one word or two words from our callers as far as what they want to talk about. I just knew it was Dave in Humboldt County, and you know, I know who that is. He calls often enough to where I know who it is, and that's not a bad thing. We like people who you know call the show and bring something to the table. I appreciate the participation. But Saturday, it's kind of like the speaking stick. Yeah. You know, we pass it around to the people who haven't had a chance to speak yet. Yeah, exactly. I want to talk to people who I don't know. You know, who I've never talked to before, or at least I don't remember talking it's, to. It's Dave's Dave's calls are some of my favorites. Let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. We'll go to Steve in Pennsylvania. You're on Free Talk Live. Steve. Hi, folks. Uh, I used to believe like 99.99% of the people. And uh, the only reason I'm calling in your show is because uh, uh, you might have like 90%, 95% that are up to speed uh, uh, or maybe 5% that are up to speed compared to the 99.9% that aren't. Okay. And I hear everybody talking, and the, what you need to know is, the, I believe, is the key. And the key is that you and 99.9999% of the people out there are not who they were told they are or who they think they are. Who am I? <laughs> because of their name. Your name is not you. Mm -hmm. Your name is... It's just is, a noise I make to refer to myself, right? by the birth certificate. Well, no, a name's just a noise you make to refer to yourself. Like, I am a flesh and blood individual, but people call me by this name, Mark. And it's like, you know, like the sound of a hair lip dog. They go, Mark. <laughs> no. What I'm trying to say is it looks it looks like you and you believe it's you, but what are you by the about? nature of the birth certificate being a, 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 a banking document, your mother, mm -hmm. when she made uh, 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 signed the birth certificate, uh, there was another thing that went in with that that nobody knows about. It's called the report or a report, and that report was usually, I don't know if it was from a doctor or somebody, but what it did is it listed you as a child of unknown parentage. And because of Why that... Why would you do that? My birth certificate is very clear that explain. I have parentage. Let me explain. Because the government, uh, if you have a bastard child or a, uh, a child of unknown parentage, they, become, they be, are seen as a ward of the court, and they become... An All right, so, uh, Steve, I'm going to just stop you there because we're short on time. I understand what you're saying. I um, We've talked about these conspiracy theories before. I would people like to have give been you the lecture. People have been calling, uh, Steve. But Steve, the problem is, is that we've got a minute years. left in the show. About this for years. They've been calling about this. What I'd like to invite you to do is call another time, maybe not on the very end of uh, the show. Call earlier on. I'd like to discuss with you why you think any of this matters. Even if it's true what you're saying uh, that the government has created, you know, the, I don't, you haven't gotten to it yet, but the straw man, like the all capital letters, that's the, indicate the, you know, the indication on the documents that it's not really you. These are some of the theories that are very common, very similar to what you're saying and you know what is the point is there a way that you know are you going to are you going to tell us that there's some kind of magical phrase or filing of paperwork that you can uh, make or speak that will somehow get them out, get you out of this crazy system uh, do you have some sort of solution or are you just trying to spread the the this theory but what I'd like to do is let the expert that knows about this tell the people and just give the uh, web Great. address have about call where they can in. listen to the audio. 855-450-FREE. He can call I'll in. Have or that she. expert call in no, any time. No, 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 no. Thanks, I, I'm thanks not for the call tonight. Yeah, so a lot of these so-called experts that he's talking about, when you go to their websites, they give you a little teaser, and then there's a $500 fee to get their CD-ROM that'll well, help free you from the system. For God's sakes, I wouldn't want to share this, the, 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 the secret to freedom for free. Right, let's go to Steve, and maybe his maybe his expert is the is the one who will give it away, and we didn't, give, didn't, him call a, in. And we didn't give him the chance to uh, give the web URL. Go ahead and have him call on in and uh, tell us the secrets. Go ahead, Steve, you're on Free Talk Live in Maryland. 
Hello. Hey there. Hi. How you doing? Good. You're on the air. Quickly. Uh, well, I had uh, uh, several comments. I, I think, you know. Uh, you got time for one comment, I, Steve. I, Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think that the, the biggest problem with the police departments is probably unions. Mm, why? A, and, uh, well, I think it creates a brotherhood that, that, that they back each other up regardless. You of don't think they'd have that without right the union? Or right or wrong. You, you don't think that if they didn't have the union, they wouldn't have a brotherhood? I think it would be less. I think more more guys would stand on their own. Hmm. It could be. And, it could and, very well and be. And I have another example. My my daughter got married this summer. Her her husband is from Massachusetts. His sister came down to visit, you know, for the wedding, and then went on down to Virginia and Brother, got pulled you, I don't over. think you can finish this story in 15 seconds. I'm afraid we're out of time. Call us back tomorrow night if you've got. Uh, if you want to give us the full story, and I apologize you didn't have time for it, Steve. But we're out of time for tonight. Ruled by the clock. We'll see you tomorrow online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Are you- Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative freedomsphoenix.com constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways with liberty and property under constant attack freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda and it encourages the participation of its readers go to freedomsphoenix.com that's freedoms with an s phoenix.com freedomsphoenix.com the revolution between the ears has already happened This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,299, silver opened at $20.86, and Bitcoin is trading around $598.18. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their next meeting July 28th at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub,